That was only the last Welcome everyone to tonight's uh, Committee of the Whole for October the 15th, 2019 and we'll call the meeting to order. City Council should have the minutes from the October 1st Committee of the Whole meeting. Do I have any additions or corrections to those minutes? If not, do I have a move to approve? Move to approve. Second. second. We'll motion is second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes are carried. Board appointments, tree commission, Ms. Whitten. Yes, sir. We have three vacancies. I will start with the first one. Um, John Green has served one full term, and um, he did not submit an application for a second term, so I'd like to nominate Seth Hunt for that position. Okay. Nomination of Seth Hunt. Do we have a second? Second. Mm -hmm. Okay. And. Um, and then for the second position, Ashley Stewart um, also has served one full term, and so that seat is open, and I'd like to nominate Jennifer Morse. Second. Right. A nomination and a second for Jennifer Morse. Okay. And then for the third position, um, to the vacancy being replaced by, or replacing Blake Prestige, um, I would like to nominate Donna Young. All right. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second for Donna Young. Okay, we'll take these one at a time. We have a motion and a second for Seth Hunt. Is there any discussion about Seth Hunt? Any comments? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we'll make that nomination official later on in the agenda. Jennifer Morris. Is there any discussion or comments about Jennifer Morris? Anybody would like to share? None. All in favor of Ms. Morris, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And we'll appoint Ms. Morris later on in the agenda. And then finally, Donna Young. Are there any comments um, about Ms. Young? Okay. Seeing none. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And Ms. Young's carried forth too, and we'll make that official later on in the agenda. Okay, now item four, the Board of Equalization. Assistant Manager Crouch. I think as you may be aware, the Lee County Board of Equalization is, is unique in terms of, there's, there's a few boards that are unique. This one is even more interesting. Usually the largest city um, within a county will nominate three people for one slot and the Alabama Department of Revenue will choose that appointee. This board is very important in helping establish as the um, tax assessor goes through and establishes values for property when citizens want to appeal that they think their valuation is too high. I assure you they rarely appeal that it is too low. Um, uh, hence people don't typically want to pay more taxes than they need to but um, this board requires some specialized knowledge and Jay Connor has served multiple terms um, from the city of Auburn in this in this role and and Revenue Commissioner Olean Price asked that the City Council consider nominating him you don't actually make the appointment to serve again and why you have the ability to nominate three people um, she just requesting that you nominate one and that be Jay Connor. This is a board um, in terms of how it's appointed and so on. It doesn't really require any of the, the normal announcements and so on because it is very unique in what it does. And, and she indicates Mr. Connor has served the city and the citizens very well in this role. So the process is the city council will nominate someone or some people and the county commission will affirm them? Is that who? No, no, no. The Alabama Department of Revenue gets to choose one appointee. Oh, okay. Sure. If you said that earlier, I apologize. Okay. No problem. 
Okay. Any questions from Ms. Crouch? Okay. Do I have a nomination from the council? So moved. Or Jay Connor. Okay. I have a nomination of Jay Connor. Do second. I, all right. I have a nomination and a second of Jay Connor. Are there any other nominations from the council? Okay. Do we need to vote on this then? I'm going to go ahead official? and vote just okay. to be sure. All right. So all in favor of this nomination of Jay Connor to the Board of Equalization, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We'll deliver that to Ms. Price. Questions on the agenda? Mayor, I did want to note that um, item 9A, there were some attachments that were not included in your packet, and I put one in front of each of you and includes an application for the franchise agreement plus a, a map. And we've had those attachments all along. That is not the fault of the company seeking a franchise. Um, they were not included in your packet. And so I wanted to make sure you had those this evening. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions on the agenda for Ms. Crouch? Okay. Do I have a move to adjourn? So moved. Second. All right. Get a hold is adjourned. Okay. Yeah. We'll call to order the City Council meeting for October 15, 2019. Roll call. Caitlin? Dawson? Here. Dixon? Here. Griswold? Here. Kobe? Here. Parsons? Here. Smith? Present. Taylor? Here. Witten? Here. Anders. Would you please stand for the reciting of the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. In the Committee of the Whole, we had three appointments to the Tree Commission. This council will appoint Seth Hunt, Jennifer Morris, and Donna Young later on in the agenda. And the City Council has nominated Jay Connor to the Board of Equalization that they will consider later. Um, under Mayor's comments tonight, I'll come down and make a special presentation, but I did want to make an announcement that Ms. Marguerite White, I have re-nominated her to the Housing Authority. She's done an outstanding job at the Auburn Housing Authority. Um, her husband, Mr. Clima White, who was a successful and wonderful principal in our school system for many years, had served the Housing Authority um, until he passed away, and his widow has done an outstanding job, and I'm proud to reappoint her. All right, at this point in time, I'll come down for a special presentation. Okay, Mr. Van Daughtry, would you please come forward? Yeah, come on. <laughs> how you doing? I'm fine, sir. How you doing? Doing fine. We have a special resolution tonight, and if there are any other veterans that would like to come join us, please feel welcome to come forward. Mr. Daughtry is a Purple Heart recipient, but certainly any other veterans, we are more than happy to have you step forward and join us. Yes, This is a resolution um, from the City Council. Whereas the City of Auburn and its citizens have great respect, admiration, and the utmost gratitude for all men and women who have selflessly served their country in the armed forces. And whereas the Purple Heart is the oldest military decoration in present use and was initially created as the badge of military merit by General George Washington in 1782. And whereas the Purple Heart was the first American service award or decoration made available to the common soldier and is specifically awarded to members of the United States Armed Forces who have been wounded or who have paid the ultimate sacrifice in combat with a declared enemy of the United States of America. And whereas the mission of the Military Order of the Purple Heart is to foster an environment of goodwill among the combat wounded veteran members of their families, to promote patriotism, to support legislative initiatives, and most importantly, make sure that we never 
forget. And whereas the contributions and sacrifices of the men and women of the city of Auburn that served in the armed forces have been vital in maintaining the freedoms and the way of life enjoyed by our citizens. And whereas the city council of the city of Auburn appreciates the sacrifice our Purple Heart recipients made while defending freedom and believes specific recognition be accorded them in appreciation of their courage to demonstrate the honor and the support that they have earned. Now therefore be it resolved that the city council of the city of Auburn, Alabama hereby declares that the city of Auburn as a Purple Heart City, honoring the service and sacrifice of our men and women in uniform, wounded or killed by the enemy while serving to protect the freedoms of all Americans, adopted and approved by the City Council of the City of Auburn this 15th day of October. Do I have a motion? Who moves? I have a second. second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Mr. Daltrey, I think you have something you'd like to share with us. Well, yes, sir. First of all, uh, I presented the city with the uh, Auburn City uh, Purple Heart, recognized as the Purple Heart City, and I would like for y'all to have that. I have another one. I'll bring it to you. Uh, but also, uh, we also have a resolution to the city from the military of the Purple Heart Department of Alabama, Certificate of Appreciation. This certificate of appreciation is gratefully presented to Auburn, Alabama, War Eagle, <laughs> as a Purple Heart city in the state of Alabama, in recognition and sincere appreciation of outstanding service and assistance contributing to the advancement and the pr programs of the military of the Purple Heart, having the advancement of service for veterans, active military personnel, and their families at the heart of many of your community events, and believe me, you do have quite a few of them. I test this day of the 15th of October, 2019, by the Department Commander, David Van Daltrey, present to the City of Auburn. Thank you very much. Thank you. So you want to say one thing? Yes, yeah, go right ahead. Sure. I'm, I'm never short for words. <laughs> Being a Purple Heart recipient, I never intended to be one, but I am, and I've enjoyed it. The thing about it, we got a saying in the military, and I know some of you will be aware of it. If you talk the talk, you got to walk the walk. There's a lot of us here that has made that walk, and we can talk that talk. But I do appreciate the city of Auburn having us here tonight. And sir, we thank you very much. Well, thank you for everything. Thank, thank you, you for everything you've done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Daltrey, and thank you for the, all of our veterans. Um, it's a good segue into reminding everybody we'll have a Veterans Day ceremony coming up soon, and uh, hopefully with weather permitting, it'll be out there at the Veterans Memorial. Um, if not, last year we had to come inside and do that, but we encourage you to take a little time on that day, if you can, and, and be with us. I believe it starts at 10 o'clock, Ms. Crouch. I think that's what time the ceremony starts, and we would love to have you. And further mayor's announcements, I just want to have a few reminders here. We have a boards and commissions fair next week, and we encourage all of our community, if you are interested in serving on a board of commission, this will be an opportunity for you to meet uh, the principals who are involved in those boards of commissions, ask questions, and see if it's a good fit for you, and understand when there might be openings coming up on their boards in the future. Um, this is certainly one of the initiatives from that task force that we created early or late last year when we were first uh, sworn in. Uh, it's just our way of doing more outreach to our citizens to let you know what's available and what's out there and so you know kind of the flavor 
of each of these responsibilities. We've got some great events coming on coming in this week in our city. The Pine Hill Lantern Tour is Thursday night and Friday night over at the Pine Hill Memorial Cemetery, and I encourage you to, to attend. Um, it's a very unusual event. You can learn about the history of Auburn. You can see the people. Um, uh, I guess people play in the people who, are, who many of our roads and streets and buildings are named for in and around town and um, it just gives you a real value of the history of our community and we certainly appreciate the Heritage Association and all their investment and work and all the actors that will be involved. Tip off at Toomers is also Thursday night and what an unbelievable event. I think only Bruce Pearl could convince any of us to stop downtown and put a basketball court in the middle and bring a bunch of lights and have a lot of fun but we're going to do that Thursday night and we're very excited about tip off at Toomers and certainly um, there's an opportunity for you to go to the Lantern Tour and come by basketball practice. And then Orchestra in the Oaks is the next night in downtown where we'll have a concert in downtown Auburn and we're very excited about that as well. Uh, the Lake Wilmore Open House is on the 30th where you can <coughs> see what the potential plans are for the Lake Wilmore Community Center and the grounds around Lake Wil Wilmore. Um, we encourage you, especially if you live in that area, to go and, and check that out. But this will be a community center that will affect all of us that live in Auburn. If you will be raising children and being active, there's a good chance that you might spend some time out there uh, once it's built and constructed. So it's your time now to go see about it and ask some questions and maybe offer some ideas that we're not thinking about. And then certainly on Halloween night, we'll have downtown trick-or-treat. Uh, what a great event that our downtown merchants have championed for many, many years now, and we'll continue to do that again. So those are some announcements from the mayor, and I don't know if anybody else on the council has some other announcements that they would like to make. Hey, I have a, a couple of announcements to make. Um, at the last city council meeting, I announced about the uh, neighborhood cookout for the students. And that was supposed to be this Thursday night, but it's been canceled to October 22nd, which is next Tuesday. And it's going to start uh, at 6 p.m. And um, I have a flyer here that Jack now made. <laughs> and it's free hamburgers and hot dogs. And it's come out and... and um, Join, and we want this neighbors to come and all the students uh, in Ward 1 and Ward 2. We welcome everyone to come. And, and they want, he, he wanted me also to let the council know that you're welcome to come and you're invited. And the other announcement I have, uh, on October 26th, which is a Saturday, uh, Martin Luther, at Martin Luther King, uh, the Northwest Auburn Task Force is sponsoring a fall festival, and people of all ages are um, invited to attend. And that's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of food in the park. Bring your own tent and lawn chairs. It's going to start at 11 o'clock a.m., and it's going to be all day. So we invite everyone to come out and join in, in these festivities. Okay. Anyone else? Yes. Sir. I have a Ward 2 meeting. will be on the 29th of October from 6 to 7.30 in the library. And we'll have a special guest. Our assistant city manager will be there to discuss infrastructure projects in Ward 2. Thank you. Anyone else from the council? This is on our agenda a little bit later, but I just wanted to recognize uh, and thank our economic development team. We had an, uh, another industrial announcement uh, yesterday from the governor's office, ID Plastics. Um, they ultimately will be hiring up to 50 of our citizens and investing almost $10 million in our community. And um, it's been a great year. Our economic development team has done a great job this year. Um, the success we've had has been awesome. Just last week, the governor was in town with another announcement with Vinkelman, and uh, we're just proud for everything that they do to create the opportunities that we have to reinvest back into our community. So, so Ms. Crouch, if you'd make sure the economic development team understands how much we appreciate them and thank them, and congratulations on this new announcement. Okay. All right. Anything else from the council? Okay. Auburn University Communications. Good evening. Tomorrow, Auburn University student leaders will be joined on campus by their counterparts from the University of Alabama and the University of Georgia for the annual Better Relations Day. This tradition spans over 70 years and is an effort for students to leave their rivalries on the field in order to come together and discuss, discuss issues facing all of our campuses, exchange ideas, and promote the best possible relationships amongst all three universities. 
The EAGLES program, which stands for Education to Accomplish Growth and Life Experiences for Success, is Auburn's comprehensive transition program for students with intellectual disabilities. disabilities. To continue its momentum, the program is hosting a one-day fundraising campaign, the 20K in a Day Challenge. The challenge started at noon today, and any gift given will be matched dollar for dollar until the program reaches its $20,000 goal. The reasoning behind this is because $20,000 would be enough to cover the cost of a student's housing for two years, pay for health and wellness training for all students, or provide a family with a substantial scholarship. Gifts can be made at aub.ie slash give to eagles. SGA has recently worked with the Auburn University Medical Clinic to advocate for a sexual assault nurse examiner program to be on campus. This program would allow students closer access to forensic exams following a situation of sexual violence. SGA is leading a fundraising event to provide funding for the program. Donations can be, ma can be made at aub.ie slash s-a-n-e or checks can be written out to the Auburn University Foundation with SANE in the memo. After just one week of fundraising, students have already committed a substantial amount of the total need, which is to raise $36 by the spring semester. This money will go towards supplies, exam trainings for medical clinic nurses, initial medications, and provide three-year sustainability for the SANE program. Albie Claus, Albie's annual holiday photo fundraiser, will be held on November 9th, 10th, and 24th at the Jay and Susie Googe Performing Arts Center. Registration is first come, first serve, and will open online next Tuesday, October 22nd at noon. That's it for the report and War Eagle. <laughs> hey, before you leave, speaking of rivalries, the City mm -hmm. Council tonight, uh, and I'll have to give <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem uh, Witt and credit for... Uh, for pointing us in this direction and reminding us, and she did a great job of that. But certainly the, the uh, Beat Bama Food Drive is ongoing, and, uh, and we do want to win. So, uh, so tonight the City Council is, uh, is trying to do our part to help out, and we've brought you some cans that we hope you can take and count towards our uh, volume so we can hopefully beat Bama this year. Thank you so much. That'll be a great way to show off tomorrow at Better Relations Day. <laughs> <laughs> War Eagle. War Eagle. War Eagle. Thank you. Uh, Rona, yes. I, I forgot to mention something. When I was saying the 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 cookout is going to be in the Meadows community, uh, and that's on Grant Avenue. Okay, it was going to be on William Street, but now they're going to do it in the Meadows because they already got grills and tables and stuff set up. Sure. Okay. okay. Good. Thank you, Connie, for that clarification. Okay. All right. At this point in time, is an opportunity for the citizens to come forward and speak to items that are on the agenda. These are only items that are on the agenda. Um, we'll ask you to. We'll give you five minutes and ask that you give your name and address for the record. There are many things on our. A couple of things on our agenda tonight that do have public hearings attached to those, and we would ask that you uh, leave those comments for that particular time. Um, at that particular moment. But if there's anything else in the agenda that you would like to speak to tonight, um, please come forward and give your name and address for the record. Okay. Seeing no one, we'll move forward with City Manager's Communications. Hi, Mayor, under City Manager's Communications this evening, we have the announcement of two vacancies on the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. Terms begin December 1st, 2019 and end November 20th, 2023. Appointments will be made at the November 19th, 2019 meeting. There are three vacancies on the Building Board of Adjustments. Terms begin upon appointment and will end November 2nd, 2023. Those appointments will be made at the November 5th meeting. And then there's one vacancy on the Educational Building Authority. The term begins November 12th, 2019, and ends November 11th, 2025. Mayor, our next item of business is the consent agenda. Does any council member wish to remove an item from the consent agenda and deal with that item individually? And will the council would like to see anything removed? Yes. Okay. Uh It was um, 8D6. Right. 8D6, correct? Yes. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, 8A, please. Minutes. 8A. Anything else? Okay. Ms. Crouch will take these in order here so item 8a are the minutes from the october 1st 2019 meeting 
Um, I'd like to um, ask that we have more detailed minutes in the future. Uh, in the minutes for this past meeting, for example, there were six separate instances of a statement that said the council asked questions about the project. Then the next paragraph was the city manager Buston answered all the council's questions. Um, that was, like I said, six different iterations of that throughout the minutes. And I think it'd be beneficial if anyone wanted to go back at some point in time to actually follow, you know, what the del uh, deliberations were if we add more detail uh, to the minutes. Uh, I will defer to the city manager for a further answer, but as I understand it, the minutes are just a synopsis of, of the meeting. There are audio and video recordings that, that detail everything, but they are not meant to be a transcript um, verbatim and actually a lot of times when you read minutes they don't even say anybody ask question they just say item was brought up it was voted it it was um, moved on and so that's something I'll be happy to check further with on the city manager but procedurally we've been following for years that they are a very succinct synopsis of what happened and there are other records should somebody want to go back um, and and do an entire transcript of the meeting those those things are available in video and audio I, I agree recently that that's the case uh, you know in the past uh, obviously we did not have audio and video coverage but uh, I think I'm not asking for a verbatim um, transcript I'm thinking along the lines of a question was asked uh, about X Y Z whatever it is subject matter subject matter right and uh, the other council members may disagree with me on this but that's that's uh, something that I would suggest and ask that the city manager take a look at I'll be happy to discuss with him and we will report back to you. Thank you. Anyone else on the council have a comment or thought on this? Okay, so we've pulled it off the agenda. We still need to approve it, correct? Absolutely. Right. Okay, so do I have a motion to approve the minutes from October 1st, 2019? So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the minutes carry. <clears throat> right, now we need to go to 8D6. Item 8D6 is authorizing a contract with MNC Land Services LLC for repair of the stream bank at the Town Creek Park in the amount of $36,592.60. Megan, the reason I asked that it be pulled was uh, I was absent from the packet meeting on Friday and, and it's in Ward 6 and I just wouldn't, I'd appreciate if you could just give me a brief Yeah, and what you. I will do is we have two folks here that will answer your question a little more thoroughly than I will, which is Becky Richardson, our Parks and Recreation Director, or our City Engineer, Allison Frazier. We've had several cases of um, collapse of the bank of the creek, and it's in the area there where the uh, dam is for the pond, and it's gotten progressively worse and has been, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, uh, roped off where the public can't get too close to it. But uh, we solicited proposals, and because it's been so dry, They've been obviously working on other projects and it was hard to get someone to do the work. And we got a proposal that uh, Ms. Frazier reviewed as an engineer and she felt it was a good proposal and we wanted to go ahead and get the work done while uh, the um, weather was good for that. So of course we've now instigated a new rainy season. So. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Becky. And answer your questions. Do you have any other questions? That's fine. Thank okay. You. Yes. Did, did you say this was competitively bid? Or did you put it out for bid? No, it was. Uh, we got proposals for it. It was under $50,000. You know, public works bid law projects under $50,000 and meet that tilt, but we always typically get quotes unless it's a sole source vendor. Okay. Um, that, that was my. We had multiple sources to choose from. I guess that's a better question. Is that right? We had previously gotten a proposal, but then they were not able to get to the work. And so we took this one. Okay. The, uh, the newspaper today said that the, this was the lowest bid for repairs. Is that accurate? Yes, it was She said, just because I know the microphone is off, it was, it, was the lowest, it was lower than the original quote that we had. I, I just, we got two, and this yeah. is the lowest. Yeah, there was like a half page ad in yesterday's paper about a company that does the exact same thing, a local company. And when you do a quick Google search, you come up with about you know twenty or so different companies. So I just just curious if if this was um, 
simply we only got two to start with. Is that what we're saying? And one of them that was non non responsive. And so we went with Correct. This one. We had one that we were negotiating with. We went went to another one with this type of work. And the city engineer can speak a little more to this if we need her to. But it, we have a very difficult time as we run into with our road projects and everything else. Little projects are hard to get people to build. It is hard to get qualified people to quote. And you can't just have anybody working on the stream bank. If it's not repaired properly, we have bigger issues on our hands. And so we are challenged by that. We are always open to getting multiple quotes. Our departments do that very well. But a lot of times, we can't, can't get people to quote on our work. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. Any, anything else from the council? OK. If not, I have a motion to approve this. Move to approve. Second. Mm -hmm. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. All right. That so leaves the remainder of the consent agenda. Move to approve the consent agenda. Second. A motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Consent agenda is approved. Okay, Mayor, under ordinances this evening, item 9A is authorizing a franchise agreement with Point Broadband of Opelika LLC for cable services. Unanimous consent is necessary. A public hearing is required. And then I just wanted to let you know that we do have representatives here should you have questions, and our staff is also available to answer any questions you may have. Motion. I'll introduce the ordinance and ask for unanimous consent. Second. Mayor, we have a public hearing. Yeah, I do that. No. So we have a motion and a second. Does anyone on the council have a problem moving forward with the vote on this this evening? All right, seeing none, at this time we'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to come forward, please uh, share your name and address to the council. Anyone? Okay. We'll close the public hearing. Any questions from the council? Yes. Um, we have a map of their service area, um, and if we could have the representatives talk about the areas they chose, and um, there's some key areas that uh, fall under wards two and three on the uh, far north end of the city limits that are not shown here that do not have um, coverage, um, and so and it ties into the. Opelika side, which is, I thought, one of the benefits of um, having this franchise agreement. Yeah, sure. So we, we've been in talks with the city. Can you state your name and address for the record? Sorry, just so No, of course. Thank you. I'll keep you up. Yeah, my name's Chad Walker, General Counsel of Point Broadband. I appreciate the question. So we, we've been engaged in conversations with the city for a while, and those conversations have been um, broad reaching on which areas of the city that the city would like us to look at. So I don't view that conversation as closed by this hearing and this application. So whatever the questions are, I know this is a, as a public forum, but we'll sit down with anybody anytime and talk about our stance, stance what our plans are for the city. We will first, uh, we've kept a database of customers that have called us on the city side. It's well known that the city of Opelika built the system. We purchased it when the city of Opelika had it. They couldn't serve outside of their city. We're not bound that way. So a lot of the people that have called us are just right on the other side of the Opelika. Um, when the city asked us for that map, they were, they were, it was the contest that asked us what areas will we focus on looking to build first, so that's what we provided the map. But that's not, that's not the scope of our interest or a limitation of our interest. That's, that's just a starting point of our conversation. Have an idea of tonight what kind of what the overall interest is? City coverage, full coverage, city limits. No, we're, we're going to take a very cautious, gradual approach, right? Okay. So, so we we have a map which I think some of the information actually came from the city uh, calls the city had, and we'll go to the, the people that have called us first, and and, and we'll expand from there. So, no, we, we're not. Um, trying to limit our scope, nor we, we're trying to uh, express grandiose plans and there'll be construction trucks rolling around. That's not, we're just going to take the calls and grow, see what happens and build upon our success. I know there was some conversation about expanding to areas that we do not have coverage and I think Mayor Pro Tem had addressed that. Um, that's a that's a definite need in our area and I know that that will probably require some capital investment from your company. Uh, is that in, in the game plan at some point? Well, we, we, we need to look at the actual information, what the address are, and do the engineering and the construction plan. So uh, we'll meet with anybody on the city council. 
but uh, we, we just met Allison and we worked with Penny before. If uh, normally what we do is sit down with Allison, sit down with the city administration and take all of that information at one time and then respond. But that we will, we are open to the dialogue and looking at it and we'll be very transparent in how we look at that process. And you'll be serving both corporate and residential customers, is that correct? We, we, do, we do provide residential and business service, correct. Same quality of the one gig, I mean the same, everything service wise. It it's world class quality service, world class customer support, no question. <laughs> Any other questions for Mr. Walker while he's up I'd here? I'd just like you to sure. be sure to include sure. in your in your potential areas the uh, the areas north of 280 along Heath Road, all that area. I know I've had a lot of constituents that live along there that are reliant on satellite only delivery to for internet services and things. We're well, happy to take a look at it, and if you want, we can follow up with with you. And we, the more information we get, specific addresses, the easier it is for us right, to take a look right. at. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Any other questions? Any other questions? Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Well, let me ask one more question. I'm sorry. Well, just about, because this is somewhat limited in scope as what we're looking at. It looks like phase one is going to be a pretty limited to my ward around the mall, which is going to be, and that looks to be pretty corporate, I think, in that area, some residential. And then we got a pretty good stretch here up 280. Can I, you sit here? I'm sorry. Do you want some context for that part of the No, 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 no. I mean, sure, if you want to provide it. But my really my overall question is what is, what, what is phase three? I mean, we, we, don't have, we, we, we don't have phase one, two, three, and yeah, four, right? I'm, that, that, I'm just going based off what's been provided. Right. So uh, we, we have, uh, again, we bought the system from Opelika. Sure. We, we have a very close relationship with the medical community, and there are a lot of those customers are along that route. And we had promised to provide service to those customers as quickly as we could. Good. Thank you very much. appreciate you bet. it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions from the council? Comments? We have a motion and a second. So, Make, real quick, Megan, this is an eight year agreement, franchise agreement, is that right? I will have, I think and it is, Greg, my answer. I, it's not one of the few things on this agenda I did not formulate, but the answer is yes. It's an eight year, so we would renew it every eight years. That's correct. It's built where all the franchises come up all at the same time. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Dawson? Yes, ma'am. Dixon? Yes. Griswold? Yes, ma'am. Tony? Yes, ma'am. Parsons? Yes. Smith? Yes, ma'am. Taylor? Yes. Whitney? Yes. Anders? Yes. And right now we have a number of planning items. The first one is item 9B1, a request for annexation by Catherine and David Manley for approximately 1.03 acres located at 505 Lee Road 110. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval. Unanimous consent is necessary. I'll introduce the ordinance and ask for unanimous consent. Second. Second. A motion seconds. Anyone on the council have a problem moving forward with a vote on this this evening? Any questions? Yes, I have some questions. Yep. Um, under public safety, talked about fire suppression activities to be affected by travel distances and capabilities of the water system. It's currently serviced by, looks like Beauregard uh, Water, um, is that right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it says the nearest fire hydrant is 2,000 feet away. Uh, is Auburn permitted to tap into another water district's fire hydrants if necessary? I would believe that any time you're fighting a fire, you can <coughs> tie into anyone's, but uh, there are some challenges sometimes in the Beauregard area with some pressures, and that's probably why that comment was made. Not just distance, but also pressures. Okay, so not hard and fast whether we have the ability to provide fire support for that property. Is that accurate? Or if you want to talk about it's the standard comment that fire makes. Yeah, I mean, when, when we annex out in these areas, the fire department just likes to make it clear that they may not be able to get there as quickly as they can to places that are closer into the core. And so they just, they like to go on the record that, you know, annex or beware, if you will. And Forrest, would you say that this, these citizens are totally aware of that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that, that's cited in the actual ordinance itself, and then they're, they're made aware of it in a number of different ways. Thanks, man. Any other questions? All right, we have a motion and a second. Okay. Dixon? Yes. Griswold? Yes, ma'am. Kobe? Parsons? Yes. Smith? Yes, ma'am. Taylor? Yes. Whitten? 
Yes. Walter? Yes, ma'am. Anders. Yes. Item 9B2 is a request for annexation by Gene Peterson and Victor Peterson for approximately 3.3 acres located at 2452 Lee Road 159, also known as Wrights Mill Road. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval and unanimous consent is necessary. And use ordinance and ask for unanimous consent. Second. Yeah, motion seconds. Anyone on the council have a problem moving forward with a vote on this this evening? Seeing none, are there any questions? I do have a question. Um, how does how do they get to this property? Do they have to cross over? I believe they actually have an easement to Wright Wright Smell Road. Okay. Go down the dirt road. It's there on the right. Dirt portion. Okay. But it looks like it is the dirt road Lee Road one fifty nine. Yes, yes ma'am. Looks like it crosses over the State Parks property. It's closed down now. It's, it's dead end down there. Oh, okay. I know it very well because I flipped my first vehicle right in front of that house. <laughs> <laughs> first, I remember that too. My daddy hadn't let me forget it yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? <laughs> that needs to be in the minutes. Yeah. Make sure that's in the minutes, Caitlin. <laughs> or detail. Okay. All right. Caitlin? Crystal? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Smith. Yes, ma'am. Taylor. Yes. Yes. Dawson. Yes, ma'am. Dixon. Yes. Anders. Yes. Item 9C1 includes various zoning ordinance text amendment to amendments to Articles 4, 5, 8, and 9 for the purpose of integrating street classifications from the Engineering Design and Construction Manual with the Corridor Overlay Area Regulations. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval. Unanimous consent is necessary and a public hearing is required. I'll introduce the ordinance and ask for a unanimous consent. Second. We have a motion to second. Does anyone on the council have a problem moving forward with a vote on this this evening? Seeing none, at this time we'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address the council on this issue, please come forward and give your name and address for the record. Okay, seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. Any comments, questions from the council? Seeing none, Caitlin? Moby? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Smith? Yes, ma'am. Taylor? Yes. Witten? Yes. Dawson? Yes, ma'am. Dixon? Yes. Griswold? Yes, ma'am. Anders? Yes. Item 9C2 is a request from David Kahn on behalf of Green River Real Estate Investment LLC to rezone approximately 3.18 acres from rural to comprehensive development district for property located at 2826 Cox Road. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval of the rezoning. Please don't confuse this with the conditional use, which you will not see just yet. That comes later in November. A unanimous consent is necessary and a public hearing is required. I'll introduce the ordinance and ask for unanimous consent. Second. Well, we have a motion to second. Does anyone on the council have a problem moving forward with a vote on this this evening? Okay, seeing none, we'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address the city council, please come forward and give your name and address for the record. Good afternoon. My name is Lula Wiggum Marable. And I'm standing here in opposition to the rezoning of this particular property. Approximately two years and eight months ago, I stood here voicing the same opposition. And so now we're here again. And at the um, city planning, Commission, someone asked, well, why are we here again? Because it was denied uh, in 2017. What has changed? The only thing that I can see is that things have gotten worse for the homeowners and the residents, residents in this area. I, for one, I live next door to this property. And I'm very much opposed to having 
a property next door to me when I'm in a residential house having a property built <coughs> next door to me. That's one thing. Secondly, what has gotten worse is that the traffic conditions have gotten much, much worse on Cox Road, all the way down from Y Road to where this property exists. The traffic is backed up daily. And in particular, during the time when the school buses are coming and bringing the small children, and the bus stops right on the corner of my property. And the traffic is backed up in front of the uh, school bus and behind the school bus. And it's very, very difficult to get those children off the bus and into their parents' arms. So I see it as a public safety issue, not just for uh, myself, but for the citizens that live on Cox Road and for the traffic that comes through there daily, which has increased tremendously. I also feel that it's somewhat unfair to have a residential property next door to a commercial property uh, without in a benefit to the person that's living in the residence because the property value has an opportunity not to increase but to decrease the value of the property. So what are we doing? What are we looking at? Have we really thought this through? Have we really thought about, has anybody ever even been on Cox Road doing a traffic, heavy traffic hour and not have, don't have a football game. It starts Thursday afternoon and the traffic gets heavier and heavier from Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And you can barely get through, not, not count the rush hours as well. I see some people are nodding, yes, they've been on Cox Road. I would invite you to take a look and let's take a, a really good look and let's be sensitive to the safety issues of the residents that live in those areas. Thank you very much. Thank you. Who would be next? Hello again. You can put my, my face on the name now. I'm Dr. Steve Hamrick. I live at 2071 Fieldview Drive in the community we're talking about. Um, I had the pleasure of talking to Dr. Uh, not Dr. Mayor Andrews. I'm going to give you a doctorate too. Um, and also to Taught a lot of things, but not a doctor, but that's okay. Okay. <laughs> but you don't play well on TV. Uh, and, of course, Bob Parsons, glad to talk to you as well. Yes, I'm, I'm also opposed to it. Um, I appreciate the time you took me to... to with candor to tell me um, politely um, the city side of this. And I, and I think I think it's a reasonably good side. You, you, basically what you say is, you know, there's a commercial property that's already going over here. And in fairness, we should make Mr. Khan's property the same. Let's be fair to Mr. Khan. Okay, I, I understand in principle the idea of fairness. Um, but fairness is a two-sided coin. And are we really being fair to him and to us? And I think it requires me to tell you a few things about where we stand in terms of fairness to us. Uh, this started really for me last summer. Um, I've always uh, enjoyed keeping up with, with the city council. Um, I used to be a reporter, by the way, for WRBL television. I, I covered you guys for years, um, not you specifically. Uh, but, it, but it gave me a good... Um, practice to, to keep up with what was going on in my area. And I always do that. And last summer, there was an open house. So I came to that and talked to Logan Kip at that time of the planning commission. He was very polite, tell me, <coughs> he showed me the maps. And I asked him, uh, Logan, is there going to be anything in our area that, that he's interested in? And he said, no. He said, right now, we're, we're playing catch up downtown. We're trying to expand 
uh, downtown where we're looking at the areas around the soccer field to the north of you. And, you know, and that's where the expansion has been. And so I said, okay, went back to, went back to the house. Um, feeling pretty good about things. That, there was no issues going on there. Two months later, I got a phone call from a neighbor, and he says, um, there's this property up here that's been bought, and they want to turn it in, into commercial property. And it called us flat-footed. You know, where, where did this come from? And frankly, we didn't know. So I went to a meeting with Mr. Khan. He was very polite. He answered all the, all the questions he could. And it left us still with, where did this come from? How did this happen? And so I started doing research. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a professional writer. I do research for a living. So I started looking into the city council's records. It mentioned in the original um, submission by Mr. Khan that this was going to be for industrial support. And I was like, what is that? I'd never heard that term before. And so I started looking at that. And I found out there was this thing called the Exit 50 study. And I said, what's that? I'd never heard of that either. Um, I asked uh, Council Member Dawson, I said, what is, what is the Exit 50 study? He says, I don't know. He'd never heard of it. So I had to do several days of research because the, the, the time for the Planning Commission was coming. And I said, well, Kale, I need to find out. So I did. Um, it was, I don't know if you know, I'm going to tell you. The Exit 50 study was used to augment the Comp 30 plan from 2011. Uh, this was done back in 2014, and it was done by t principal, I think, by Tyler Caldwell. And he said at the time, well, let's add a designator to these lands called industrial support uh, that would allow for things like Mr. Khan's business to go in. Well, nobody told us. Uh, I, I I'd never seen the Exit 50 study. I looked for it. It's not available publicly. You can't read it. Um, nobody informed us of this ruling had been done. Uh, we had no idea. So we just blissfully went on with, with our lives. And all of a sudden, this was thrust upon us. Um, I went to intense study to find out, you know, what, what Mr. Khan's business was. We're not going to go into that today. I, don't, I understand that. But at the same time, it led me to understand the nature of what had been done with the zoning. And one thing, sir, you told me the last time we got for us in 2017 was that, well, you've had plenty of time to uh, study these matters. You, 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 you've had lots of time already. You know, you're going to be forced out eventually. Yeah, we are. But I would argue that we were not informed. We were not given time to, be in, to make an informed decision on these things. And <coughs> if my neighbor, who moved here in the last few years, who is here tonight, had known that there could be a business like Mr. Khan's coming into that place, would he have moved here? Probably not. I mean, if, if you knew that your neighborhood could have a warehouse that would, and it was going to have things that could hurt your kids, would you want to move there? No, you wouldn't. But he was never given that opportunity. His realtor didn't know about it. Um, I don't know that Logan Kip, the Planning Commission, knew about it. So my question, which you maybe ought to ask yourselves, who did know? And Evidently, some people knew. Mr. Mr. You know, our, our friend Mr. Khan knew uh, and took advantage of the situation. That's his business. He's an honest businessman. He, he's got a right to do what he wants to. But was it fair to uh, people here who moved to our neighborhood to have not tell us what was going on? Why are we left flat-footed? Why, why are we not given the opportunity to know um, the full story before all this, I would never have found out if I hadn't spent like a full week just, just pouring through documents, doing cross-referencing, finding out. And when I did, it hit me like a ton of bricks. And I'm like, I, I, and I'll add one more thing. Um, when they move, when they decide to put the road um, to the Technology Park West, they were, they were talking about moving it through our land first. They tried to buy our land and came five different times. And Riley Bryce, who I personally like, by the way, he's a nice guy, um, he told us that, um, yes, this land will eventually be going commercial. But he didn't tell us anything besides that. He didn't say, well, there's an Exit 50 plan now that's got an industrial support designator that, you know, we, we can put, you know, um, whatever this is going to be up there that's going to be damaging to, to your property or to your lives. Nobody told us that. <coughs> and frankly, that's not fair. And that's really what I want to say. There's two sides of this. But was it fair to Mr. Khan either 
to put him in this situation, which is frankly an awkward one, I, and I feel for him. But was it a fair thing that was done? And I think, you, I think each of you needs to ask that question. Was it really fair? I don't think it was. And it wasn't fair to, to the people of our neighborhood, and it wasn't really fair to this whole situation. Was it your fault? No. I'm not, I'm not looking to place blame. I think this was a failure of the system because I would never have known it if I hadn't have done some intense research to figure out what was going on, and it took me a long time. But why, why, did it, why would it have to be? Why was not informed? Why, why, why wasn't the people who, who bought houses in our neighborhood informed that this was going to happen this way? And so I think there is a higher <coughs> standard of fairness going on here that is not being considered, and I would ask you to consider it when you vote. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. Do what? No, you're, you're fine. We got you. Okay. Who would be next? Lindbergh. Mr. Jackson, let this lady. She was up before you were. Oh, yeah, she she stood up. For you. you don't have eyes in the back. Okay, that's fine. That's that's why we're here to help you. <laughs> Hello, um, my name is Amy Lankford, and I reside at 2021 Fieldview Drive. Um, I grew up here in Auburn, as well as my parents and grandparents. I've seen a lot of growth in Auburn. Um, I wanted to start off by stating the obvious that our home is indeed. Um, Hold on just one second, Amy. Sure. Can we get that door closed? Thank you. Okay. Oh. Sorry to interrupt you. You're fine. Go ahead. It's indeed um, zone rule at the at the moment. Um, I just wanted to jot down some things to talk about. One was rule. Um, just I feel like that meaning is important. Um, it just talks about like a district intended to protect and preserve areas in Auburn which are presently rural or agricultural in character and use. This is important zoning definition because it does in fact show that we are some of the fortunate few in Auburn that do have some acreage. <laughs> um, it means a lot to us and has enabled us to show our five children to look outside their windows and see land, to ride around on their four-wheelers, to see nature. So many positive things um, that are going outside that some of our kids don't get to see if they're in a more tight neighborhood. Um, that is why we bought our home. Um, if you rezone this residential piece of property that was purchased to CDD, it is causing the adjoining residential properties to suffer not only a financial hardship, but an emotional hardship as well. Um, as for my home, my family was forced into an 18-month lawsuit to purchase our home, um, costing us a lot of money. This was only resolved a little over a year ago. We probably wouldn't have made those choices had we known what was going to be put into this property that was actually our neighbors at the time. Um, I feel that we have um, been put into a situation to be reactive instead of being given the opportunity to be proactive and move forward in a positive way. We have not been given a timeline um, because I don't think there really is a clear-cut timeline, um, but I feel like we need to be given the time to find a safe and fair solution for all of us. Um, I feel that we, the owners of the properties adjoining uh, Mr. Khan's residential piece of property that he bought, again, he you know knew it was a residential piece of property, that our um, needs should come first. Um, we are the current families living there. Um, we have invested time and money into our homes, and we love our homes. Um, our children love their home, and this negatively affects us in so many ways if it has passed. Um, in the Zoning Ordinance, Article 1, Section 101, legislative intent states that this ordinance contains performance criteria intended to ensure that neighbors are protected from adverse impacts, that the purpose of this ordinance is the promotion of the health, safety, and general welfare of the present and future inhabitants of Auburn in many ways. One states by protecting landowners from adverse impacts of adjoining developments. I just wanted to touch base on that because I feel like it's hard to understand unless you're in our situation living in our homes and you know, our kids are scared and they don't know exactly what's going on. And, you know, just we have five children in Auburn City Schools. And, you know, if you move one row down, you're in a totally different school district. So we've actually had to keep, you know, keep our son at a private school just to keep him in one school until this is all resolved. So I hope that it all gets resolved shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> all right. Mr. Jackson. Mr. 
Lindbergh B. Jackson, 8154 North College. A friend of uh, Widow Marable here, uh, her husband and I, and what's happened or what's changed since 2017? Of course, a lot of things have changed. Five of you guys have changed. But um, just a few weeks ago, I stood before you concerning a <coughs> property that is not contiguous but it's catty cornered of this property, about 40 acres, and it's called Wind Over Farms Mobile Home Park. It's not in the city, it's in the planning jurisdiction, true enough. As Mrs. Marable stated, traffic is very heavy. The residents are fixed, they're in place in that particular community. This property very well could go industrial. Could come into Auburn, might stay in the county. I spoke to the Lee County Commissioners tonight. And what's also changed is the fact that exit 50 leads into our industrial park. It's now complete. Any developers or entrepreneurs or anybody that's looking to be in an opportunity zone. Opportunity zone, that's the key word. It's in a opportunity zone, which <coughs> is designated by the state for tax shelter for the people that develop in that particular area. We have over 40 residents that are being asked to move. None has been evicted officially yet. We're waiting for the eviction notices. Once that happens, those property owners will have to do something legally to protect their lifestyle. Their kids are moving, the gentleman is not offering any monies for these people to be moved. So there's a hardship at stake here. The hardship is most people that live there, some of them don't have that kind of money to just up and move. So that opportunity zone says in the, at the state level that you can't displace nor cause a hardship on the residents and in moving into that zone and taking advantage of the tax shelters, the tax breaks. If they come to Auburn, you guys will be confronted with that. If they stay in the county, Lee County will be confronted with that. But surely, this opportunity zone is going to change all of these people's life and lifestyles. And another way that we have addressed this issue in Northwest Auburn, and you got something on the agenda, and we'll talk about that later, is that gentrification is spelled out. And the previous council, before you guys, Mayor, you heard me say, what's gentrification? Big brother, little brother. I gave you that scenario. How big brother brings in all of his friends to little brother's room and plays and takes away his game. That's what's happening out there. Big brother is moving in. He's moving in because it's an opportunity zone because of exit 50 be in such an advantageous uh, exit into Auburn, people are going to be misplaced. I think you need to consider the people. What's changed? Why did the previous council turn it down? I think you need to look at that before you take your votes. Tonight. <clears throat> because this is gentrification in its rawest, purest form for those people out there. Thank you. Who will be next? <clears throat> Good evening. Uh, my name is Adam Ficken. I live at 2060 Fieldview Drive. Uh, our property, my wife, my family and I, we have two small children ages three and two. Uh, we adjoin the far western boundary of the property that is being proposed for rezoning tonight. Uh, I just come to you with the, the heart of a father who wants to take care of his children and ensure that their well-being is looked after and speak up for them. Uh, I don't see a business going into my backyard as something that would be beneficial for us at this time. I certainly want to uh, do what's best long term for the city and I've said in the email that I've written to all of you that we're willing to work with you the city 
if you're serious about having this as industrial support space, then my thought is is that you could be serious about in, about building an industrial support park. Uh, you build industrial parks. So as opposed to just allowing one small business to kind of come in and, and push us out of the way and force us to deal with some things that we really don't want to, I think a better solution would be if we work together to produce a plan that would allow the homeowners to get out of the way, so to speak, of the corporate development train. And that would allow Mr. Khan to benefit as well. So if you're not able or you're not willing to do that at this time, I believe the best option before we tonight is to say no to the rezoning and protect us, the residents who do call this area home. I think Mr. Khan and Mr. Williams have more flexible options at their disposal to open a business or acquire property or rent space. Um, it's much more easily attainable than it would be for us as homeowners to live with the consequences of the decision or pick up and move. It's not something that's easily done just to uproot your family. And so I'm asking you tonight just to use wisdom, knowing that we can do something better together in the long term, as opposed to taking a, a short-sighted, in my opinion, a very selfish plan that's being brought before you tonight. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Travis Wisdom, and uh, I own the Wisdom Firm located at 2353 Bent Creek Road <coughs> in Auburn. Uh, I'm before you tonight on behalf of uh, David Can. Uh, it is pronounced Can, by the way, uh, as the applicant for the rezoning. Uh, Mr. Can's property <clears throat> is surrounded on four sides, obviously, um, and and two of the homes uh, had people speak before you are residences, and and they're behind him uh, to the south. Uh, he has a neighbor where this council um, did and, or granted the identical request he's making here. They were rural. They were joining him. They asked this council to make them CDD. The council did so. Uh, and then uh, across the street to the east, we all know we have the Auburn Industrial Park. So um, Mr. Can's property I want to say is located on Cox Road. I bring that up because Cox Road is in front of Mr. Can's property, four lanes, uh, and a block down it goes into five lanes. Um, and then three blocks down it hits our biggest interstate in this part of the state. Uh, certainly this council is not responsible for exit 50. That would fall on the shoulders of the Alabama Department of Transportation. That came, that changed this neighborhood drastically. There are automobiles, uh, as Ms. Maribel pointed out, that travel this road frequently. Everybody wants access to the interstate. That's very normal. Uh, the industrial park has been there for a long, long time. It is within a football throwing distance of the residences that surround Mr. Can's property. Um, so giving you the picture of where the property is and, and what it's located next to, the neighborhood is changing. And, and I'm, I'm not unsympathetic to those who spoke before you tonight, but we're in a situation where Mr. Can is a citizen of this city he has a small business. He's the little guy here, and we have residents who are saying, we don't want his business here. The reason I think his business should go here, or the reasons, are as follows. First, we are talking about less than half a mile from an interstate exit and less than 15 yards from the Auburn Industrial Park. This maybe once was a rural neighborhood. Uh, Chief Dawson's got land that backs up to the industrial park. I know he, 
probably isn't a big fan of that, but it's there. Um, and it's part of, of who Auburn is. We've got a great IDB that is out there attracting new businesses to come create jobs here in the city. That's for a reason. It builds our tax base, it funds our schools, it helps build public roads. We want that. Uh, is it uncomfortable to live by? Absolutely. I wouldn't want it. I didn't choose where the Auburn Industrial Park went, but that's where it is. Um, I want to differentiate, though, what Mr. Can's doing. He's erecting an office building, a showroom, and a warehouse on his property. So the idea that what he's doing somehow endangers the lifestyle of the three residents that touch his property really isn't a reasonable argument. He's going to double the buffer that's required of him by the city. He's going to have a solid fence that surrounds his property. The property, which I think you've seen a, a uh, rendering of in your packets, is going to be uh, well-built, good-looking structure. He's going to have 24-hour security there. His business, unlike the industrial park just across the street, is an 8 to 5 business. Hey, Travis, this is a zoning discussion tonight. Right. What and you're I, saying really so, is more appropriate at the conditional use. Well, I'm not talking about how he's using it. I'm talking about the nuisance factor, Mayor. Okay. So because it's 8 to 5, there's not going to be anything that affects the lifestyle of these folks. There's not going to be late night deliveries. There's not going to be uh, increased traffic during uh, hours where people are using their residence. What his property will go to is a use that's used daytime only. The CDD zoning is appropriate because the comp plan has dictated that this area will become just that, a CDD area by the year 2030. The Planning Commission unanimously approved this rezoning request. It was their opinion, unanimously, that this is the appropriate use for the property uh, and the appropriate zoning. Uh, as I mentioned already, the adjoining neighbor, his next door neighbor that borders his property, achieved this very same zoning two years ago. His is the next request in line, and it's appropriate for this area. Uh, the so-called uh, residential area, this is designated rural right now. Certainly that it could be used uh, as a residence, but it, can, it also has other uses uh, for, that are allowed in that zone. This zoning is not going to interfere with the rural zoning of the, of the uh, parties who will be left on the property. Finally, I want to point out that the city staff has recommended approval of this rezoning request. It's what uh, really this entire area is going to move to, and we shouldn't restrict one business owner from getting his rezoning request granted when we've just given it to the adjoining business owner, the very same request. You're sort of picking and choosing there and saying, well, we like this guy and his request, the same identical request is being made here. We don't like him. Um, so, yeah, I know we're not talking about you, Mayor, but I just wanted to point out he's not doing anything that uh, in his CDD zoning that would interrupt anyone's daily life in this area. I'm open for any questions if anybody has any. You may have any questions, Mr. Wisdom? Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Who would be next? <clears throat> and good evening. Uh, my name is Clay Langford. I live at 2021 Fieldview Drive. Uh, I want to bring up the fact something Ms. Marable talked about, uh, and it was brought up at the, at the com planning commission meeting, is that I asked the question to begin the meeting: is what has changed? Uh, since we fought this two years ago and you guys voted it down, uh, what has changed? And the answer I got was nothing has changed or we don't know what's changed. Uh, everything is pretty much still status quo. Um, and none of us have been told anything that, was, that has been changed that would warrant 
the council voting yes on this. Um, I want to say that my wife and, and five children, you know, moved out there in 2015, and we love being out there. Um, Mr. Can purchased the property a couple years ago, and, and I understand he wants to build a business. And his lawyer so eloquently put out, pointed out that there is a lot on the corner that was on CDD. It is not the same because it was a vacant lot. There was a residence there. Um, you know, Mr. Kahn could have very well purchased that lot. You know, maybe it was because that lot was six hundred thousand dollars, and the and the home he purchased was two fifty. And I throw those numbers out because those numbers are important toward us. Uh, I don't think anyone should be discriminated against. Uh, I think that to allow Mr. Kahn to come in and effectively purchase a home and then go in the back door and say, well, hey, I want to make this a business now, um, I don't think it's right. And I get a lot of calls from realtors. Hey, I'm so-and-so from, you know, XYZ Realty Company. We would like to, to sell your property. Would you like to sell it? Well, no, I don't want to sell it. Uh, I've got almost five acres in town and it's very attractive property. Um, I have reached out to realtors and, and since this has come about and, and you know, ask, hey, what if, what if this business does get built in our backyard? What happens then? Well, it effectively destroys our value of our homes that we've worked hard and, you know, added on. We, we, we keep a nice neighborhood. I don't think any of you guys up there would want, you know, to, to have your home values destroyed. I mean, who would? So I would ask each of you to vote no based off the fact that it's not, I wouldn't say it was adequate to, to allow one person to take value and, and leave the rest of us out in the cold, if that makes sense. Now, thank you for your time. Thank you. Who will be next? <coughs> Anyone? <clears throat> There's a gentleman. Did, did you want to speak, sir? Okay. All right. Anyone else? Okay. We'll close the public hearing. Any comments or questions from the council? Yes, Mayor. Uh, as this property happens to be in Ward 8, and I want to first say Mr. Can has been over backwards to, to put a plan together to build on it, and I appreciate him taking time to meet with the citizens out there, and I appreciate his attitude, and Mr. Wisdom is always eloquent when he speaks, and I appreciate that. That being said, uh, there's no way I can support uh, rezoning this to commercial with affecting the families like it will. Miss Marable and her husband moved there in 1980. When I was a young man, and uh, Mr. Marable, a very hardworking individual, worked hard, had the, and he has the nicest has they have the nicest place on the entire road. Uh, she's a widow woman now, lives there, keeps the yard immaculate, has a very nice home, and it's something we can be proud of to to for visitors coming in Auburn to see. Took a lot of hard work to get it that way. Uh, Clay and Adam live back in there behind it. Uh, Clay, like he said, has five children. Who are often out playing in the in around the house. Adam's wife has two small children. She pushes them quite regularly in a stroller up and down the street. He had a very large dog that wanted to eat me up several times when I would walk down the street. But uh, uh it's just and the and I voted for the corner down there to be commercial because it was a corner of the street on the corporate and uh there was nothing on the corner, nothing on that property at the time. Frankly, it was a run, run down barn, and frankly, I think the corner would be more appropriate for something like that. And, I, and I'm normally big on property right, owners' rights, but, but uh, I just, given no, knowing these people like I do, knowing the area and the neighborhood, I really, I just can't support the rezoning of this property right now to commercial. Uh, I do feel like, however, in the near future that. It, it, it become more lucrative for everybody out there. I really, if the economy keeps going up, it, that's going to be a hot piece of property out there. Uh, and I know you've done a lot of work, Mr. Can, to get get where you're at now. And I appreciate that. I really do. But I just can't, in all good conscience, support these good people uh, having that type of uh, warehouse by their in their backyard. Thank you, Tom. Anyone else on the council? Yes, I want to say something. 
Um, I, I, I always think that the resident needs should always come first. And if anybody understand um, development in our neighborhood, I am one of the people that understands when something come into the neighborhood and unknowingly because I've experienced it in my own neighborhood. And to destroy people, families, livelihood, land, value, I just think it's unfair. So um, to, to, to just continue to bring in uh, maybe okay with some, but it's not okay with other people. So I do not support rezoning, and that is what we're talking about, zoning, right? Yes, right. Rezoning the area. So I'm not in support of this. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, Go ahead. I wonder if you or Forrest could give us a broader picture of this particular area as it's uh, as it's positioned in the whole Comp 2030 vision of our city's growth. Um, yeah, I'd be glad to. Once we knew about the interchange and how that would change that area, um, not knowing the timing of it, but knowing that that would set the stage for dramatic change, we recognize the need to go in and comprehensive plan for that change, which is the Exit 50 study that was referred to uh, that, that was done back in 2014. That went before the Planning Commission. That was approved by the Planning Commission. There was a public hearing. Um, it wasn't a secret. Um, and we recognize there would be industrial growth out there. Um, and we recognize there would need to be support uses to support that industrial growth. And so we provided for that and kind of wrapped that around. Um, what we haven't talked about, but I think it's important to mention, is that about two-thirds of that study area is still in the unincorporated county, including property that abuts the properties that we're talking about tonight, which means on those properties anybody can build anything they want um, whenever they want. And so what we wanted to do was get ahead of that, plan for that area with the expectation that at some point folks would also want to bring that property in for developmental purposes. Ms. Wood. Of course, um, answered one of the questions. Um, but I do recall two years ago when we had this in front of us, we stated it wasn't time and that in probably a couple of years it would be time. And so fast forward a couple of years, we are here and this is a zoning request and we have already demonstrated that we have supported the future land use plan by rezoning the property adjacent to this applicant's property to CDD. So I don't know how we can justify denying this applicant's request for the zoning. Um, the use is a totally different scenario and that's a whole totally different um, application and process and would come before us later. But tonight we're here to talk about zoning. Um, and a zone is um, and we have demonstrated just recently that we support the land use, the future land use of this area, and what has changed is two years later, and that's why I would be in support of changing or uh, re rezoning this to CDD. Anyone else on the council? I believe health, welfare, and safety are the, the overriding things that we should be considering. And obviously the welfare of our residents is uh, of utmost importance. And um, uh, two years have passed. Uh, I assume that the rationale for denying it two years ago was similar to the requests we've had tonight to deny it. I don't see where anything has changed other than time. Uh, if, if it wasn't time for it two years ago, I still don't think it's time for it. Um, I strongly oppose the uh, rezoning. Anyone else? Anyone? Well, I'll, I'll chime in. You know, and I appreciate the um, the residents of the area and and Adam and I had an opportunity to speak this afternoon. I hope he um, understood that I was I was incredibly sincere. You know, in in my empathy, um, going through a similar situation with with a family home and a good old Dollar General coming in next door, and um, 
you know, blocking out a sunset on a on a family farm. So I understand, you know, exactly what we're what we're what they're going through, and um, and understand the um, I hope they understand the the weight with which we have to to um, to bear this decision, you know, in that light. But I, I do um, default to our 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 plan. You know, I think everyone seems to to be on the same page that ultimately this is going to be a, a commercial corridor off of a brand new interstate exit and um, and almost a, a, a plea for for time to to assemble other properties and and make a, a push for their own commercial um, future use and so to withhold the current applicants um, ability to do just the same just because we're, we're waiting uh, when his next door neighbor has already been granted the use, um, you know, in 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 a line or in line with with our our land use plan, just seems to be picking and choosing, and I just don't think that's that's a great precedent. So I will be supporting the uh, the use change, excuse me, the zoning change. Um, this before us tonight. Thank you, Jay. Anyone else on the council? Anything they'd like to say? Um, before we vote, I just I want the members of this neighborhood, Miss Maribel and Steve and Amy and Adam um, and Clay, to know that um, the way y'all have conducted yourself has been first class, and um, y'all have been so passionate about your neighborhood. And uh, I appreciate. Um, I've talked. To, I think I've talked to every one of you on the telephone and almost all of you and you've handled yourself appropriately here tonight as well so thank you for conducting yourself in that manner um, this is a very very difficult decision i told my wife this afternoon i'm not so sure this isn't one of the toughest decisions i've um, ever made since i've been either been on the council and certainly since i've become the mayor um, i will support the rezoning tonight and i don't do that um, lightly um, it was a very difficult decision for me to make, but I do feel like in the best interest of our community moving forward as we move forward with um, with the Exit 50 area out there and all the uses that will be coming out there, that this will be appropriate in the future. And certainly I don't want anybody to be hurt by this. And as we move forward, if, if this were to pass with a conditional use, I'd, I'd expect to hold firm to the protections that everybody should be afforded um, if a business were to go in here. And you have my word that I'll be very diligent in working on that if that's, if that's, if that's where we end up after tonight. All right, anybody else? Okay. All right, so we have a motion and a second. So, Caitlin, go ahead. Persons? Yes. Smith? I have to recuse myself from this vote. Taylor? <clears throat> no. Whitten? Yes. Dawson? No, ma'am. Dixon? Yes. Griswold? No, ma'am. Toby? Yes, ma'am. Anders? Yes. Pass. Okay. Item 9C3 is a request from Brett Basquin on behalf of East Glen Investment Properties LLC to amend the plan development district designation on 30.62 acres known as Sanford Village PDD Amendment Assisted Living. The property is located at the southwestern corner of East Sanford Avenue and East Glen Avenue. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval. Unanimous consent is necessary and a public hearing is required. I'll introduce the ordinance and ask for unanimous consent. Second. I have a motion. A second. I have, does anyone on the council have a problem moving forward with a vote on this this evening? Seeing none, we'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address the council, please come forward and give your name and address for the record. Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. Any questions or comments from the council? Okay, Caitlin. Smith. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Whitten. Yes. Dawson. Yes. Griswold. Yes. Toby. Yes, ma'am. Parsons. Yes. Anders. Yes. 
Fair under resolutions this evening, item 10A1 is a request by Brett Basquin on behalf of East Glen Investment Properties LLC for conditional use approval of an institutional use assisted living for property located at the terminus of Sanford Village Court in the Comprehensive Development District with an overlay of Plan Development District. The Planning Commission recommended approval with an 8 to 1 vote and a public hearing is required. Okay. Move for approval. Second. All right, we have a motion to second. At this point in time, I'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address the council, please come forward. Give your name and address for the record. Seeing no one will close the public hearing. Are there any questions for the city manager? Any comments? Seeing none, this is a resolution, so we'll do this by voice vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 10A2 is a request by Robert Oglesby on behalf of 3J's Properties LLC for conditional use approval for a recreational rental dwelling use, also known as an RV park, for property located at 341 Willis Turk Road in the Rural Zoning District. The Planning Commission recommended approval with a 5 to 1 vote. A public hearing is required. Move to approve. Okay. Do you have a second? Second. All right, we have a motion to second. At this point in time, I'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address the council, please come forward and give your name and address for the record. Okay. Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. Any questions or comments? To the city manager? I, I have sure. a comment. It might be a question, but um, this would be an RV park. Do we have um, any additional RV parks that are within the city limits? Yes, we have several of them. Um, the owner of one is sitting in the front row. Uh, you have, you have um, Auburn RV Park, and then you also have, um, or do you have at Wire Road and, and, um, and Webster Road? Eagles Landing. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Sparrow. <laughs> yes, Eagles Landing at Wire Road and Webster Road that are in the city limits. There are a number of RV parks that, that sit adjacent to the city limits. Um, and then there is one more, but I, the one Thomas adjacent from Bath and Holtz Place that's got the little buildings, is that in the city limits? That's County. Yes, Legends. Apologize. There's quite kind of extensive regulations and forests can get into that to go into when you actually have an RV park in the city limits about paving things and about buildings and other things. It's not, um, it's not necessarily a, a simple process of just put an RV park. They have some pretty strict requirements. Is that road, Lee Road 57, can it handle the traffic of, I mean, the movement in and out of those? It's it's RVs. fairly, the development on that actually has access to Willis Turk at this location is fairly sparse. A, a good portion of the property in the surrounding areas in the county. <coughs> um, the, the big lot that you see behind this use on the prox map that's in the county, that's actually a trailer park. The, the use, because of, the, because of it being rural in nature and then having a lot of lots in the county, there's uh, all kinds of different uses. And um, there's some single trailers that are in the county. There's obviously the bigger trailer park. And you've got, you've got some RV parks in the larger surrounding area. Any other questions? Okay, we do have a motion and a second. We'll do this once again by voice vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. All right. One opposition. Motion carries. Item 10A3 is a request by Felix Legassi on behalf of Legassi Construction for conditional use approval of a performance residential development, two academic detached dwelling units for property located at 321 and 325 Canton Avenue in the neighborhood redevelopment zoning district. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval. A public hearing is required. I have a motion? Move for approval. Second. second. All right, we have a motion to second. I'll open this up for public hearing. If you'd like to address the council on this, please come forward and give your name and address for the record.
Um, hi, I'm Elizabeth Hill. I live at 274 Bragg Avenue. Um, I'm not going to go through the history and the struggle that has been through this neighborhood with decisions that have been made by this council and the planning department that have gotten to where we are tonight. Um, I've been very grieved by some of the decisions the council has made as I've watched it change the fabric of this neighborhood. But I have been encouraged by recent decisions to designate ADDUs as a classification. While I cannot change what has happened, we can choose to move forward with the current conditions. I would ask this council not to approve these two new ADD units. Um, I think that this is a decision that should be examined closely. While many, probably even people on this council, believe that our neighborhood has already been lost to the college students, I actually don't. I think that if we halt the building of the ADDUs in the neighborhood, that and choose other types of housing to be built instead, then we can increase the diversity and the community that's a part of this neighborhood. Um, this has been done in other cities well. Greensboro, North Carolina has done it um, and found a way to move forward with both college students and historic residents that have been part of the neighborhood. And I believe in Auburn that we can do that. I ask that you listen to the people, including myself <coughs> and Councilwoman Taylor, who actually live in the neighborhood and believe that there is community there. I ask you to choose what we want and not the priority of the developer whose main purpose in this is financial gain. I ask you to do what you would do in your own neighborhood. And I ask you to choose community and diversity and citizens over profits. Thanks for your consideration. Anyone else? I'd like to address the council on this. I'm Bird B. Jackson again. I am a property owner now. I'm family has been, but I own LBJ and Associates, which I do own a property there and have every intentions of renovating that property property have previously been used for low to moderate income people in that particular neighborhood. I'd like to say about 75% or maybe a little less of the neighborhood has been wiped out from what I call, uh, even though you may say ADD, it's many tour domiciliaries. These kids come, they have one objective basically in mind, and that is that they're looking for a place to stay. The parents is looking to save money. But we are looking to save a neighborhood. Gentrification, I spoke out against it. And Forrest came up and the planning department. And they gave us all of these ultimatums. We're going to let you all choose. I'll take these maps, go sit around the room and draw on the maps and tell us what you want. We did all of that. But what did we get in exchange for it? We got a kick in the rear. 75, 80% of our neighborhood's gone. We were told that we would have mixed housing. Some townhouses, some duplex, just so happened I, mine has two meters and I pray that I'm grandfathered in under that. We were supposed to have mixed housing. We were supposed to have some diversity in the neighborhood plan. None of this taking place. We were RDD. They came in like gangbusters. They bought, they built, and you know, the man has a right to make a profit. But we depended upon you guys, the planning commission as well, to help us to protect our neighborhood. Save the family as if it was a village at one time where everybody knew somebody and everybody was felt safe maybe leaving their doors open. My property is investment. I plan to go back to the low and the moderate uh, end of the spectrum because of the fact being gentrification is one thing. Gentrifying is another thing. Gentrifying a neighborhood means that you don't only consider the investor, you try to keep some diversity so you keep community intact and the fabric just doesn't get destroyed by people that are in, spend three years here, four years here, and then they're in, then they're out. We still have some people who love their neighborhood, like <coughs> Councilman Taylor and myself, like seeing and being able to go back and visit people that have been in that neighborhood for three and four and five generations. So 
ADD, these guys are here for a minute and then they're gone. We don't know them. They don't know us. We, we're planning an event where we can get to know some of these people. But in four years, guess what? It's going to change again. It's going to keep on changing. It's going to keep on changing. But after 40, 50 years of living there and people that have grown up there, we can come back to what? What do we come back to? We come back to a bunch of buildings. Well, we don't know who our neighbors are going to be the next year or the next six months sometimes. So my thing is this. When you put this new ordinance in place to review and make these buildings look more like what the neighborhood looks like, I think that it should be some mixing and some collaboration between the neighborhoods. Now, Planning Commission has approved it, but they're the ones that approved the original plan. They're the ones that got this, the uh, uh, award for changing the plan for Northwest Auburn. But are the people satisfied in Northwest Auburn? I hate to use this language, Council, but hell no. We're madder than hell. Because we no longer have a neighborhood. This man has a profit. Thank you all. Who will be next? Anyone next? Anyone else? Okay, we'll close the public hearing. You will the council have a comment? Are there structures currently on those two lots now? I don't believe so. The, note, the notes say a single family detached home. Is that the, the, are there two? Is, is there one? I'm just I think there may be one. Proper description says contains one single family. What was the question? Is there a is there a house on that either one or both of those lots now? There's a house on one of them. What's the condition of that house? Um, this is old ha home. I mean, you know, it's not tore down or broke broken down or anything. It's livable, livable. Is it occupied now, Connor? Uh, no, I don't think so. It, has it been traditionally rental property or personally owned? It was on. Any, uh, any questions for the city manager or any comments from the council? I have a comment. Sure. I have something I want to say. Absolutely. Um, well, uh, you know, I guess when all of this started about the uh, the units that's that's there now, I wasn't sitting on the council at the time. But, and I know everybody know my argument and how I feel about it. But to add two additional homes to the neighborhood, I, I'm not, I'm not going to agree with that. Um, I don't know what the rest of the councils are going to vote on. Now, what we have decided because of what has already happened is that we want to try to be neighborly with the students that's already there. Now, I've noticed that all of the houses are not filled. I don't know if they bought or not, but I know they are not occupied. All of them are not occupied from the ones that are there. So why would you want to build two more? I have to agree with uh, Ms. Hill. If you're going to build, I have no problem with building. I have no problem with improving the neighborhood. But if you're going to build, can you at least build something that's compatible more compatible with what was already there. I know from my neighbors, and I've talked to each one of them, and there's not many left, but I've went to everybody's house in that neighborhood. Nobody else is going to sell, okay? So we just want to be able, and just like Mr. Jackson said, you know, four years pass, Jack will be gone, the rest of them will be gone, so we don't know what we're facing in the future. But, but what we have now, everybody seems to be getting along. It's, it's, it's quiet for it to be students. It's pretty quiet. I've knocked on some of the students' doors, and we've had conversations, and everybody's willing to get along. But this, just to continue to put the houses there, and, and they're not already, they already, all of them, is not occupied, I just don't see no reason to add two more to it. So I'm, I'm going to have to go 
go with my neighbors on this one, and I vote that we don't add the two uh, units that that's being asked for. Thank you, Connie. Anyone else on the council have anything they'd like to say before we vote? I have one more question. Um, I guess, so is the concern the houses or is the concern the use of ADDU? Um, because I'm hearing a very different argument. I'm hearing we don't want houses there or do we not want ADDUs there? Well, I think there's, it's pretty obvious we don't want the ADDUs there. Okay. Is it, and, okay. And I, because I, 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 maybe you didn't understand me, but I was saying I don't care about them building. If they want to build some single family homes, that's fact. You know, we, we have no problem with single family homes, but we do, everybody have a problem with them building there. And I, I have a follow up to that, Ms. Taylor. So if we were to, if this were three bedroom, two bath, you'd be okay with this? Single family home, yes. Well, no, I'm just asking on the layout. If it was a three bedroom, two bath, would you be okay with the design? Oh. That'd be a, I mean, these are technically still single family homes, but I know there's an argument over the definition. <laughs> well, but I'm just you, well, uh, well, well I, let, me, let me just answer that. Let's go down William Street, okay? There is a two story home on William Street that is a uh, family home. There's a student lived there, yes. Some parents bought the home. And it's two stories. It looked totally different from the ones on Canton and the ones on Grant. So, I, I would not have a problem if they built another one like that one because it's, it, you know, it's, it's obvious that it's a, it's a home. It's a, it's a single family home and compared I, I, to yes, I'm, what's I'm, on Canton and what's on Grant. I'm just trying to understand the, what's the diff, if it's the people that are living in the home that's the problem, the potential people that are living in the home because I think federal law and state law would preclude us from taking into consideration housing think HUD and other things would be problematic legally if that's what we're considering our vote on based on who potentially could live there. Um, so I'm just trying to understand if it was, if it's the design, if it's the five bedrooms instead of the three bedrooms or if the four, I'm, I, I don't, I'm just trying to get to the bottom of, because we've got a conditional use and if we're making an argument that we're concerned about particular people living there, I think we're running afoul of potential federal and state law, but that but we're I'm considering ADDUs. ADDUs, I think we all understand, have been primarily occupied by, by college students. Right. And what we're looking at tonight is an ADDU. So, and, and, and it's not a problem about who's living in the homes because the students living all over. They're, they're single family homes right, across, right on Fraser. Okay? And they're, you know, they're just regular single family homes, but students live in them. So uh, the problem is not the student. But, and I'm not saying that the problem is the students. I'm just talking about the type of housing, that, yeah, the design of the housing. But the, the council and the staff and everyone has gone through an exhaustive process recently about ADDUs in general. You know, we had to define them. We uh, established areas where they're allowable and not allowable. So what we're doing is, is we just immediately establish these new rules and then the first thing we do on it is turn around and ask for exceptions for conditional use. You know, if we're going to establish rules, I don't know why we don't stick to some of these rules. Um, so that's really the issue. It's not who's going to be in them or what they look like from the outside. You know, we're being asked to make an exception to a rule that we just passed. Well, we, so I, I just, Mr. Griswold, we voted on these all in certain zones or conditionals. They're going to come before us any time they fall into that definition. So. It's not, we're not making exceptions, that's what we voted on. We voted on every time in this particular zone, if there's an ADU that's planned, it becomes conditional, which means we, it comes to us for a vote. And I believe that was a change because they were permitted in this area right. by right, right. And, we, and it was changed to conditional. We're not asking for an exemption. I, I think that's a mistake. We're not asking for an exemption. This, this is the process that this council adopted, was every conditional. Yeah. Certainly it's the process we adopted, but if we wanted them in there in the first place, we would have said permitted. Okay, but, okay go ahead. Council, right. Councilwoman Taylor's, to Councilwoman Taylor's point, is um, the difference between an ADDU type of product and the two-story that's close by you <coughs> is that the two-story close by Councilwoman Taylor has the ability to be, to be rented to anybody, including families 
The difference with ADDUs is they are marketed towards students pretty much exclusively. I don't think we will see any family looking at an ADDU as saying, let's move there. But, but to your point, Mr. Parsons, I'm telling you, if you designate voting, if we vote based on who's going to live in a house, we're going to run, we could potentially run into federal and state law violations. I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you that's the law. Well, that's good, but no, I, it is, no, but it I'm, is good. I'm saying to you that I'm not voting on that at all. But that, that's I'm why I'm asking the right, viability, the marketability of a house. That's why I'm house. asking what the. That's why I'm asking on the conditional use. Is it because it has five, five bedrooms instead of three? Because if we're basing it on there's a certain individual who's going to potentially live here, we maybe have problems that are bigger than conditional use in an ADU. And point. and if we're stating our our job for conditional use is determining the health, safety, and welfare. And now if the argument is the density of these two properties is maybe not uh, for the betterment of the welfare of the neighborhood, that's a different argument. And that's something that we can legally consider. So if we talk about maybe the density of these two homes for that area, for that neighborhood, i.e. the streets may not be able to handle that or the, you know, but if we're talking about density and health and safety and welfare, that's that's an opportunity for us to have a conversation regarding that. All right, so we're considering the conditional use of two ADDUs uh, in the neighborhood redevelopment district. Are there any other comments or questions from the council? Okay, we'll try this by voice vote. We'll see how it works, okay? All right, so all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, please say nay. 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 I believe it fails. Do we need to do a voice vote? You need you need a voice vote. Okay, I don't think let's do a vo could, voice, vote, voice vote then. Or a hand vote or whichever sure. you want Sure, let's do a voice vote. Dawson? No, ma'am. Dixon? No. Griswold? No. Hovey? Yes. Parsons? No. Smith? Yes. Taylor? No. Whitney? No. Andrews? No. Okay. I'd just like to clarify the with the council, when you choose to deny a conditional use, you should be very clear as to what your reasoning is. So even though that, that did fail, I would like to recommend that that you state some reasons for the record why you de deny the conditional use, just to be clear um, for the record. I would state that it's for health, safety, and welfare because of the density and the impact on the neighborhood with regard to the welfare of the neighborhood. That's exactly the reason I proposed it. Uh, we've got complaints about the density of over there in that area and building these type of things and the reason Miss Whitten gave I'm opposed to it as well. All right, so the you're good with the record council collectively, those of you who voted against it is for the record to reflect those that is the reasoning why you voted for denial. Is that okay? Or I just want to make sure we're gonna be clear in the minutes what that says, what your reasoning was. Absolutely. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Right, are we ready to move on, Mayor? Yes, we're ready to move on. Item 10A4 is a request by Travis Gamble on behalf of Buckaroo Enterprises LLC for conditional use approval of a performance residential development, a private dormitory for property <coughs> located at 355 Armstrong Street in the Urban Neighborhood South Zoning District. The Planning Commission recommended approval with a four to two vote. A public hearing is required. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. At this point in time, we'll open up the public hearing. If you'd like to address the council, please come forward and give your name and address for the record. My name is Carol Ann Carr. I live at 342 Payne Street, and I'm the president of the neighborhood group that covers Payne Street, Pinedale, and Hare Avenue. Our neighborhood would like to ask that this conditional use be denied for this proposed private dormitory development the neighborhood feels that it is out of scale and character with the nearby neighborhood uh, for several reasons. One is the density. Um, that house that's currently on the property is a two-bedroom home. Um, the proposal is for an 18-unit apartment building. 
um, to be crammed onto that one lot. Um, we feel that's, uh, you know, the scale is completely out of touch with what uh, goes down the street there toward the school. Um, we have only seen one fuzzy um, picture of the proposal, but we still think that the building seems uh, too large and not in character with what is around it in the neighborhood as, as far as just the appearance. The third concern we have is about traffic because uh, Sanford Avenue is pretty impossible <laughs> at, a, at a lot of times of the day already. And to put something uh, that size right there on that corner where Wright Smell Road comes out and dog legs across to Armstrong seems to us uh, excessive. Um, our neighborhood admittedly is very concerned about traffic. When 221 Armstrong went in, we asked the city to do a traffic study because we thought we would be having problems. And the city said, no, 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 it's not going to affect Main Street. It won't affect Hare Avenue. That could not have been more incorrect. We have had a huge increase in traffic on those streets and a lot of a big increase in wrong way driving on Payne Street. In fact, I just encountered it again this afternoon. And I'm, we've kind of uh, taken to refusing to get out of the way when we're coming down the street and making people turn around and go back the other way because we've gotten so tired of this problem. So uh, we're also concerned because we now have a number of small children on Payne Street and on Hare Avenue. So more increase in traffic in this general area um, really concerns us. The uh, other thing we'd like to point out is that we have had a lot of recent renovation and restoration of homes on Sanford Avenue and uh, on Payne Street. The, the former Shannon home at the corner of Payne and Sanford that the Hayeks have restored, the house next to it, which has been beautifully added onto and matches very much the original uh, architecture and so forth. Um, on Payne Street itself, uh, Mary Susan Lowe and her husband Stuart had finished the renovations of uh, the Lowe home there. And um, um, I also uh, want to point out the work that's being done by Susan Sargent Jones and her husband. Some of you may know her. She's Caroline Lipscomb's niece. She called me from Maryland today and said, um, I want to point out that <clears throat> We would have been there but for the imminent birth of our grandson. Um, and she said, I would really I like to ask the city, please, um, <coughs> to deny uh, this conditional use uh, request and, and use its ability to um, send this back to planning to look at uh, something more in scale with the neighborhood to, to work with the planning department. She also commented on the number of empty apartments that are adjoining in the apartment building back behind there. And she said, um, I don't understand why you would want to build something that big when there are already um, a, a problem right there with uh, apartments not being used. Um, and she said, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry, that she also wanted to raise concerns about the traffic issue. Um, the other person that called me today was Boo McQueen, the, uh, I would say, the, el the elder of our neighborhood. And um, I will just quote you what she said to me. Carolyn Ann, please try to go and hold our neighborhood together. The city is trying to destroy it with all this development. All that traffic that we've had on 221 Armstrong, and then I will... Uh, not go into the rest of this because I've already pointed this out. Um, so that our neighborhood would like to ask you to oppose this conditional use um, as it's now structured and see if we could not get something better more, in more character and less dense with the neighborhood. Thank you very much. Or who will be next? Bill Kasky, 521 East Samford. I want to address perception and not an accusation. So please don't mistake the two. At the planning committee uh, commission meeting last week, uh, for, um, Tyler Caldwell stated that he had received 12 to 15 emails or office visits on this particular property. 
They were 100% in opposition, zero in favor. Three or four residents of Ward 5 got up at that meeting and spoke. 100% were against, zero were in favor. One of the commission members, I'll butcher his name, but I want to say it's Rickenbaugh. Mr. Rickenbaugh raised a series of questions that ought to have been considered. Was it, uh, some of it was density, some of it was in keeping with the neighborhood, some of it concerned traffic, some of it concerned parking. Nobody could answer the questions. Nobody from the petitioner was there to represent and speak to the planning commission. So you've got a developer, you've got an architect, you've got a builder, you've got an owner. Nobody was there to answer those questions. So the planning commission, it, the appearance was they did a four to two vote without the information that was being requested by one of the commission members in opposition to what the community was saying. So it made it look like the appearance of the vote was already predetermined. There's no need to come stand before somebody and answer hard questions if the vote's already predetermined. So Ms. Carr spoke very eloquently about it's a two bedroom, one bath house on a small lot. And they're proposing an 18 bedroom, 18 bath, four uh, half bath private dormitory. Now it's my understanding from Mr. Cotton that that property by right could have townhomes built on it. The builder or the developer or the owner has decided they want to put up something bigger, more grandiose. 18 bedrooms, 18 bathrooms, make a lot more money than you can putting up what will fit there. Parking. You require by, by uh, ordinance 1.1 parking spaces per bedroom. So that's 20 parking spaces that have to go on that little lot. You can hardly put 20 parking spaces on there without the building. So now you have a building that's 18 bedrooms, 18 bathrooms, out of scale for the neighborhood, and you got to provide 20 parking spaces. Armstrong is a, is a problem street for parking. The only parking that is available in proximity to that is in front of Pine Hill Cemetery. There's some parking on the other side of the road as you go north that's on the, uh, would that be the west side of the road in front of those other apartments. Otherwise, where's anybody going to park? if you come to visit that particular community. If you, there, there's an apartment complex behind it, but right behind that is KC Street or Avenue, I don't know the designation. And there are a bunch of single family homes in there. Whether they're rented or not, I don't know, but they're single family homes. So if you start mowing down neighborhoods and say, well, we got one here, let's go and do them here on KC. That backs up to the homes on um, Payne Street. So I refer to it as creeping encroachment as you start moving these big, uh, out of character, out of scale buildings into neighborhoods. If you look at the drawing, which by the way, I've seen drawings by third graders that were better than that drawing. You can't tell what that building is really gonna look like. But next to it is a single family home. Now that home may be rented to students or other people, I don't know, but it's a single family home. Next to that are two homes that I think are owned by Fuji Realty. They're rented to students. Next to that is a, is a hair salon. And then the rest of that street on that side, all the way to uh, Pinedale, are single family homes. Wright Street that feeds in are single family homes. Uh, whether they're rented or not is immaterial. They're single family homes. So you're being asked to consider a two bedroom, two bath, single family home being replaced by 18 bedrooms, 18 baths. Does that sound reasonable? If I defer to uh, Ms. Taylor, her comment on an earlier discussion was, you gotta protect the neighborhoods. If I defer to Ms. Witten, <coughs> and her comments on the prior uh, petition was health, safety, welfare. Those apply to this particular property. So whatever is permitted by right ought to be permitted. Just the rules are the rules. Conditional use, what they're being asked to do, ought not be permitted 
I encourage you to vote no. You, we, we beg you to stop the creeping encroachment of buildings that don't fit the character of the neighborhood. Thank you. Who'll be next? All right, uh, Ryan Cassidy Van, 801 South Gay Street. Uh, as per usual, I'm going to try to be the voice of reason for, you know, doing what is permitted under the rules and allowing for the development to um, achieve its maximum density as, as permitted under the, the new code. Uh, if you go back a few years ago when the regulations were rewritten, this area was designated university services. University services had a more dense um, classification. You could go taller, um, less parking requirements if I'm not mistaken. mistaken. There were different things that you could do in this zone. Um, in consideration, I think, of that, certain things were up zoned to urban core along South Gay Street. Um, I own property on South Gay. It was down zoned. I think no one would argue that that was a down zoning from university services to urban neighborhood south. Uh, at the time, I think you could go 65 feet tall, which would be really impossible on this site. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you there. But the new allowance is for 45 feet. You can build 45 feet tall. Um, I'm not sure the height of this proposed uh, building but I don't think it's taller than 45 feet. Uh, it requires a, a certain amount of parking. They would have to meet that. Um, the only thing, if I'm not mistaken, is that they're here to ask for a conditional use. Um, and again, uh, I'm not <coughs> positive of this, but I would say I think this is the first time that a fee simple townhome development, which I believe this is, has been designated private dormitory by staff. So had it not been designated private dorm, we wouldn't even be here tonight. Uh, if they met the conditions of the zoning, which I feel that they do, it wouldn't be here. Um, this has always been my fear as a builder. This, uh, hey, it's permitted by right, it's not permitted, and it's conditionally permitted. Well. Is it permitted with conditions, or is it if we kind of feel like it? Well, tonight it seems like, well, if we kind of feel like it. And I think that's a slippery slope that no property owner wants to see, uh, you know, their property rights go down where, you know, depending on how the wind's blowing, we'll see if we're going to give you what you used to be permitted to do. So I'm not speaking whether I think it's a great development, not a great development. I will say it is permitted. They're meeting the requirements, height, width, setbacks, parking spaces, and I th think it should be permitted, um, you know, under that, uh, just under that just straight definition. And I will say this, I always hear, well, it's not in character, it's not in character, it's not in keeping. This looks like this, looks, this looks like this. You know, Auburn is growing, you know, things are changing. You can't look at what was built in 1910 and then say, well, this thing in 2019 doesn't look like what's built back then. You know, we used to have horse and buggies here, and that's changed a little bit too. So I think that with an eye towards the future, we have to start looking at what's Auburn going to be, and is this what we have kind of legislated for it to go going forward? And I think the answer is yes. More density in the urban core, and then working outwards from there. So I, I think you should vote yes on this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Who will be next? Anyone? Is, he, is everybody else through talking? Hold on just one second, Ms. Carr. If there's no one else different, okay. Oh, hold on just a second. Yes. Yes, sir. <coughs> um, my name. My name is Basad Nakshad. I'm, I'm the architect with the, the three-year-old sketch. Um, I want to respond to a couple of questions that have come up in terms of density and that the building doesn't 
represent the character of the place. First of all, I live in the neighborhood. I drive on that street every day to go to work at the university. I bike there. I take my walk, dog to for a walk. I know those buildings really well. So there's a perception that architects kind of show up. They re eat the right food and dress well and write the right, right clothing, and they kind of start creating architecture. I just want to talk about a couple of things that I have considered when I was doing this building. The existing building, which is a two-story, one-bath house, was built about 60, 70 years ago. And it is right at the termination point of Rice Mill Road. The person who designed it and built it 70 years ago had enough sense to put two porches, very small house, two porches, why he wanted to create a symmetrical building at a termination point of Rice Mill Road. That's an important element. That's what I use. I built or designed a symmetrical building, not a big four unit building, but we cut it down in two and we cut down the two individual ones so it would be symmetrical. So that came from the neighborhood, too. The house is lifted off the ground, not a slab on grade, the existing house. Why? Because we get 64 inches of rain a year, not four inches in California. So if the, the building off the ground, there are five steps in one and three steps on the other side, identical to existing building. Three. The existing house has a metal roof. We try to use metal roof to be sensible and sensitive to the neighborhood. Four, the existing house is made out of partially brick. In the south, houses are built out of two things, either brick or masonry or siding stucco. I convinced my client to spend $22,000 more to go with brick rather than siding. Why? Siding, the one I was going to use, comes from New Jersey. Brick comes from Montgomery. I want to keep the money in the state, and I wanted to use our craftsmen to build the brick building. Brick is an Alabama material. Density, I'm not responsible for density. It is permitted by law to build, as Ryan said, up to like 40 some odd uh, bedrooms. We only build in 18. We have 18 plus two, 1.1 parking spaces. About eight of them are under the building, so you can't see it. And the remaining is in the back, covered with a beautiful brick wall with ivy growing on it. I know the neighborhood. I've lived in it 30 years. I've tried everything I can to make it sensible and responsible and harmonious with the neighborhood. After all, I live there and I want to be, you know, beautiful building as much as you do. And more importantly, I don't want my students to <laughs> see that building and be critical of it. So none of the kind of um, comments that have been made um, has been unanswered. The building is going to be a beautiful building. The drawing is a sketch. The sketch is different. By definition, sketch is a quick impression of the place, not a CAD drawing which is dimensioned. You want a CAD drawing? We got CAD drawings. We have plans that are dimensioned. We have elevations that are dimensioned. The building's 30 feet high, Ryan. It's not up to 45. We have done everything we can to make the building harmonious materially and scale-wise, breaking the building down to small units rather than a big building. I don't know what else we could have done. In terms of meeting, we have met with the planning department many, many times and we have tried to accommodate the comments they have made to us. And 
Here we are. Can I ask two things? Please. One, do you have other, you said you have a CAD drawing. Do you have other, could we see other designs or anything else besides the two drawings that were submitted with our packet? Is oh, we have one? plans, we have site <laughs> plan, we have elevations, we have four elevations. You can see some of those documents. You well, want. there's a set that was submitted to the city, and the city has that. Would you consider a volunteer review by our downtown design review committee? Yes. Okay. I'd move to table this to allow to get more information regarding more designs, to look at designs and potentially have it reviewed by our downtown design review committee. Just a point of clarification. Initially, before you opened the public hearing, was there a motion for approval with the second? Oh, there was. We close this out. So, there. no, you would be fine. You could have, you could either have somebody withdraw that and, and amend or make a new motion or, or amend that motion to... I'll withdraw my motion because the public hearing hasn't been closed. I apologize. Okay. I was out of procedure. Out but of when we're ready to go there procedurally, I'll be ready. Sorry about that. Okay. Is there anyone else who'd like to address the... The council, and if there's nobody else new, if you'd like to come back, Ms. Carr, that'd be fine. It was just a brief uh, thing that when someone made a remark, it reminded me that uh, on this question about density and, and character, by the way, character, as I recall, is in uh, the conditional use uh, regulations if you look at it. Um, but again, one of our concerns as a neighborhood, and I know some of you on the council have heard this before, is that. Uh, when the original Auburn 2000 plan was being discussed, um, our neighborhood went to all of those meetings and we were assured that nothing would be built next to neighborhood conservation except medium density uh, developments. And there is no way you can consider 221 Armstrong and some of these other things medium density. So um, we have a neighborhood that feels very much the city has not really followed through on its commitments to maintaining a, a you know, some neighborhood uh, that just doesn't come up with uh, walls practically right next to us. And that's one of our concerns about the size of some of these buildings. Thank you. So anyone else who'd like to address the council? Okay, seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Um, Megan, who, or Caitlin, who, who made the motion in the second earlier? So to to take a different path such as tabling i think i think that the challenge is normally we'd open the public hearing and then have a motion it's because it's this was a resolution and not an ordinance and that's probably how we went went down that path and so i mean i think the easiest way since it was moved and seconded is you would ask to amend it and the amendment would be to to table it and if, if the people are amenable from a rules perspective unless there's an objection from somebody else from the dais so we would do that <laughs> as, a, as a separate motion to amend. I, yeah, since you've moved in second, and somebody now wants an amendment to table, if, if Councilperson Smith so desires, and that's where I, the path I would head down. All right, so before we go down that path, is there any other comments from the council <clears throat> regarding what you've heard, and is there any comments related to Councilman uh, Smith's potential tabling of this and I can, remake, I, can, I can add more to it and sure add, absolutely and that is there any, well. any other comments from the council questions thoughts I personally don't think a, a nicer drawing is going to make much difference in the the uh, the meat of the discussion but so. well, as a condition of this conditional use does the council have the ability to make even though it says consider voluntary review as a condition, can we make it a condition for them to go before the design review committee? We, uh, we have discussed this as a staff and including with the city manager and believe that that is a slippery slope. And the reason that it is, is the downtown design review committee is a voluntary entity. So even if you were to send it there as a condition which is would be a little bit abnormal um, the ability for for whatever is recommended for them to have to comply with it does not reside in the zoning ordinance so it would thereby be a challenge because even if they went there there isn't any teeth to that um, and there would be no development agreement because that's one of the things the council has previously stated there would be no development agreement that follows this there are some sidewalk and pedestrian light requirements but those are housed um, and other manuals and ordinances that we have that require that anyway. So um, that specific design recommendations are a little bit challenging. 
for Cotton, did you have anything else to add to that? No, I was just going to mention that we did have a, uh, Mrs. Carr is correct, that neighborhood character is part of conditional use review, and so there are elements, there are a number of different elements that are employed when establishing neighborhood character, architecture is one, size and scale, things like that. So I, that information was offered to the Planning Commission uh, when we met last week, and so I would just offer you that same information. Um, but we, so size and scale, though, is um, separate from this use request. Size and scale is permitted by right and parallel to what they're seeking. Yes, it meets the zoning ordinance requirements, but under the auspices of a conditional use approval, neighborhood character can be considered. Okay. I think it's important to note, and I believe as you were indicating and did come up, is there are uses that are very similar that may not qualify as a private dormitory that would be permitted by right and would not be be vetted at all with the Planning Commission nor the City Council nor the Downtown Design Review. Could you give us an example of what that is? Repeat that, please. Other uses that could be very similar in scale that would are be permitted, permitted by right. By right. Uh, townhouses. Um, how, how dense a townhouse is? Well, we don't have a we don't have a bedroom maximum. For example, when um, uh, Ryan brought this up earlier this evening, um, these are proposed to be fee simple, but because of the floor plan configurations, they were deemed to be private dormitories, not townhouses. If it if it weren't for the fact that their floor plan configurations deemed them to be private dorms, they would be townhouses and they would be permitted by right. But one of the reasons why they are private dormitories is because they have so many bedrooms, which then gets you on a on a pretty serious, you get really heavy on the bedroom in the private space versus the percentage of, of, of what we call public space or common space, kitchens, living rooms, and that's one of the main criteria we employ in making that determination. In this case, if you look at these floor plans, the split is about 75-25. 75 private the, the the common space is on the ground floor. The two upper the two upper floors are entirely bedrooms and private baths. So they they were appropriately defined as private dorms. So in our packets, we don't have a copy of the floor plans. Uh, you may not. Okay. No, and they're not always submitted to you as, as part of that. You know, sometimes they are, and sometimes they are not. Um, but also to the point that about other drawings that. There may be something that was submitted that Mr. Cotton and I were, are not aware of, and I've also double-checked with the city engineer, but we're not aware of another set of plans that we did not show you. And that may be that they're, they're in transit to us or something, but I don't want you to think that we're sitting on information that we have in our files that we didn't provide. And, and, the, and the, the floor plans may not have come in. I, what, ha what happened was I, I was in a meeting with the, the owner, the, the de owner slash developer and her, her attorney, and we got in this conversation and they said, will you make a determination on if this is private dorm and tell me why? And I said, yes. And they gave me the plans and I responded to them the next morning with the number of reasons why it was a private dorm and not a townhouse. Okay, well, for that reason, I'd like to withdraw my motion. And I would okay. like to encourage that we table this so that we can have a full understanding since this is a conditional use for private dormitories, we don't even have that in front of us to review. So for that reason, I'd like to withdraw my motion. And, and Mayor, just to, just to be sure we're good procedurally, we make sure there are no objections from anybody else at the dais about the withdrawal of the motion. You have to have a, a voice vote on that? No, I don't think. As long as there are no objections from a procedural standpoint to the withdrawal of the motion, you're fine. So is just, the council okay with withdrawing the motion in second to vote on this? I don't particularly care for it. I don't, don't see where we're going with this. Um, it's up to the city staff to determine if something's a private dormitory or not. It's not up to the council to sit around and review floor plans. So the staff has determined that this does constitute a private dormitory. So I don't know what uh, what difference it would make if we see a floor plan that shows us five bedrooms and well, then, that, then we would make no difference if we had elevations. I mean, it's the same argument. Well, I don't think it does matter at this point. On another note, I'm not seeing 20 parking spaces. There's on not. The site plan. There's not. 
and that's that's cited in the staff report it's it's acknowledged that the that the parking is deficient and that will have to be resolved that's typically something that'll get dealt with at what we call our development review team which is kind of our detailed level, level administrative site plan review and the site plan's been modified a couple times but i count 18 parking spaces there are also some spaces under the building that's yeah. why yes i understand that yeah. there's two and that includes that includes eight that are basically in garages. Where are you going to find two more? Excuse me, there are 20. I can only show it to you. There are 20, there are 18, there are 20. There are 20 parking spaces. The one that we submitted, the site plan we submitted last week has 20 parking spaces and they're numbered. And we have the latest then, I don't, I, then I don't have the latest site plan because we would have gotten that before the packet went out. I don't, I, I, mean, I, don't, I can't. I can't. I, I can't speak to that. I, I, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, sure. Yeah. No. And, and I think there's a there's the balance of the equities. We need to go through the due process. Whether, whatever that ends down road, this packet is not ready. We're not. We're not there yet. I don't think. I opinion. think, in fairness to everybody, my recommendation to the council would be to, to table this um, until the first meeting in November, and so we can get a comprehensive look at the elevations, the site plans, the parking, all the information we need to make a good decision. Um, scale and character is very important. It's very important to that neighborhood. It's a very sensitive part of our community. Uh, I think it's upon us to make sure that we feel comfortable with what this building is going to look like and how it's going to fit into that neighborhood. Um, but there's some other questions we need to get answered to. And I, in fairness to the applicant and the owner, I feel like we ought to just table this for I guess it'd be three weeks because we've got an unusual month this month. So um, Beth is offered to withdraw. Um, Mr. Griswold is, is not in agreement with it. Is the rest of the council okay with tabling this um, for, for till the next meeting? Okay. I'm not seeing anybody say no. So at this point in time, what do we need to do? Ms. Witten just needs to make, or Mr. Smith, somebody needs to make a motion to table? Yeah, that would procedurally go with that and then make sure that if you're going to table table to a date certain All right, and the, ne the next meeting in november is november the fifth the first fifth. one is okay. and the second one's 19th would you uh, with with potentially tabling is there something specific you started to list a few things and that would be helpful that you were wanting information wise between now and then Yes, um, so I will move to table this to a date certain November the 5th, first meeting in November, and I would like in the meantime that we um, see a floor plan, a site plan, uh, more detailed renderings of the building, and possibly have them, um, I don't know that this is possible between now because I just had a meeting today, but um, a first glance by the design review team. You got all that? Okay. May I also ask a question that probably will be relevant to you providing us? Let me see if we can get a second on this first. How about yes. that? All right, so Ms. Witten's made a, made a motion to table this with some requests. Do I have a second on that? Second. Okay, we've got a second, Bob. Go Megan, uh, I'm obviously taking into account that I'm very green to this type of issue. I see the lot lines dissecting the parking spaces in the rear are we looking at this as one unit or are we looking at this is that that has that has been a that has been an, an issue that has been identified that we are working on a remedy with the applicant's attorney okay so that will be something that we will see a resolution to yes sir that will be resolved there's a lot of lines on there but you're definitely seeing it 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 has to do with a number of factors. Yes. Is that are the lines for parceling out into fee simple? Yeah, you've got you've got fee simple parcel lines, and you've got you've got parking space. But in the private dormitory, would it, still be, would it still be fee simple in a private dormitory? Or would that be one unit? It, it can be. Okay. Okay. With with designated parking for each unit, I'm assuming. Okay. Yes, and and I think t to the point that Mr. Parsons is making that one of the challenges is you see comments about the development review team a lot. I think some of you have looked up, you know, we have two manuals, very thick, one for water and sewer and one for all things engineering, and then we have a number of planning items in the zoning ordinance, and all of those things, no matter what you do from here and if, if you approve any item, they still have to meet all of those standards no matter what, and a lot of those comments are repeated. But um, even if something is slightly off here, you would be looking at use, and the details have to be 
met or somebody doesn't move forward, and there are oftentimes things get approved at this level that, that don't see um, final design because they couldn't comply. So With the, with the request that uh, Ms. Wood put in, did, will, is that enough time, or should we move to the second meeting in November? I think... Not, I think with the three weeks, I think most of the things oh, you've yeah, asked for week. already exist. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's we have an extra. You've week heard from the architects saying right. that they've they've got a good bit of things that may be in transit to us, and and so those are things that we can better evaluate then. I have one additional follow up uh, <coughs> question in terms of the parking again, <coughs> and I'm sure you all have this conversation. I presume you do. It's just forgive me. Um, we could look at parking of of this as a one one development, 18 beds, but we could also look at this parking as per unit is another way to view this, correct? That's right. So, so in fact, if you viewed it as each, as uh, two five bedrooms and two four bedrooms, we're rounding up at 1.1, correct? We're, uh, we're rounding yeah, yeah. up Talk at 1.1. One. Right. Yeah. right. So, uh, one four bedroom gives us five parking if we round up, correct? A second bedroom gives us, a second four bedroom gives us 10 parking, and then we are at 22 if we have five. I, I know where you're heading with that, and, and that's, that was the conversation I alluded to that we had with the okay, applicant good. and her okay. attorney, was resolving that very specific complexity. Appreciate it. Thank you. And we appreciate the <clears throat> questions, and I, you know, that's why I wanted to be clear about manuals and things. These are things our staff does every day at the DRT level with the applicants, with attorneys, with designers, and they're very good questions. And I want to assure you that this is what we're doing behind the scenes every day, um, and making sure. And that's why sometimes things can't work in the end, or they have to get a variance, or what have you. There are some shared parking provisions, but they're not robust in this area for residential. They. You know, they run the commercial gamut, and they, they are allowed specifically in the urban core, but that's a very different situation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So you haven't voted yet, correct? All right, all right. So I have any other questions, any other comments? All right, so we do have a motion and a second to table this until November the 5th. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Okay. So we will table this until November the 5th. All right. Are you ready to proceed? Yes, we're ready to proceed. All right, item 10B is authorizing the vacation of sidewalk easements along Janelda <coughs> Avenue for HP Auburn LLC. A public hearing is required. This is just a resolution. I have a motion for the council. So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. At this point in time, we'll open up the public hearing. If you'd like to address the council, please come forward and give your name and address for the record. Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. Any questions from the council? Well, I'm there for approval. Oh, we already had that in the mind. Sorry. <laughs> Any questions? I'm used to it after Concerns? what we said before. <laughs> yeah. right. Okay. Right. All right. Cool. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Mayor, those are all the items of business we have for you this evening. Sure. Hey, if I may, real quick. Absolutely, uh, Tom. Uh, one of my constituents, the elderly constituents, spoke here tonight about the traffic problem on Cox Road. Uh, it, she wasn't exaggerating. I know you think I'm exaggerating every time I talk about it, but frankly, I get very upset about it because Cox Road has been neglected. I know I live on Cox Road, but it's been neglected. She's right about it. She said, elderly woman pulling out in that road, it's dangerous. We put a, we've taken a major interstate highway that goes through Alabama and opened it up to traffic on, on a two-lane road, and I'm not exaggerating. My great-granddaddy drove his mule and wagon up that same road. The only difference in that road right now is they put a asphalt on it, put rock on it, start with them, put asphalt on it. It is a major problem, and, and I just don't feel like it would be allowed anywhere else in this city. And I may be wrong, but uh, folks on Cox Road, and I, I know the vote didn't go the way I wanted tonight, and that's, that's fine. I, I, you got, I appreciate what you did. But that being said, uh, uh, something needs to be done about Cox Road. I'd like to know when, when we. I've been, been told now for three or four years we're going to widen it. When I ain't seen the first shovel being brought out there and nothing else. And I, I'm, I know I just need to calm down, but I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm before somebody gets killed out there on Cox Road, something needs to be done about it. And he, this, this young man here with his new business is going to have trucks pulling in out of there. I'm, they'll run over you out there. My daddy is 70-something years old, 
has had to jump in the ditch to keep from getting rolled by 18 wheelers coming down Cox Road. So I, 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 frankly, I don't understand what the problem is. There are signs up there saying no through trucks, but trucks keep coming through. So I, you know, I, I'm, I'm very upset tonight with this uh, by Cox Road. It's, it, we're fixing to add more traffic to it, and you know, and nothing I can do about it. I don't guess myself complain about it. Well, I'll complain at every meeting I have to from now on about it because somebody's going to end up getting killed out there, and it would be a good chance that somebody related to me because most of our there is related to me. But Tommy, I appreciate what you're saying, and uh, you're right, and I think. My sense is, is Auburn, as the industrial part and the tech park out there becomes even more vibrant, there's even more traffic in and around that area. And uh, with the potential redevelopment of the old trail park across the street, I mean, there's just going to be more going on out there. And I would say to all of us and to the staff, it's incumbent upon us to make sure that that's a safe place. If we're going to bring more people and more businesses and that's going to bring more cars, then we better doggone make sure that we've got a great plan. To, to provide safe transportation and, and safe roads for for the citizens and all the people to be out there, so I hear you, Tommy, and um, and I and I understand your concern, and uh, and I would express to Mr. Buston if he was here that this is something that we need to put some eyes on and we need to do it as soon as we can. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah. I think, Mayor, it's important to note comment. that the design may be complete. I'll check with our city engineer on the Cox Road widening, which is a project we discussed during the budgeting process. The design of the widening of Cox Road is about 75% complete. We're in the process of uh, walking the alignment, double checking some of our design elements. We've also been talking to Lochipoca Water uh, regarding their waterline relocation. So we are moving. Uh, it's not moving um, probably as quickly as you'd like, and I do apologize for that. But we are working on the widening as well as the roundabout at Cox Road and Y Road. I, I know you're working very hard on it, Allison, and it's nothing against you, but it just gets so discouraging when soccer night at the soccer complex it backs up uh, past longleaf going up the hill that's dangerous uh ball game days next home ball game it'll be backed up past my driveway which is that's, i accept that that's part of it but the part that gets so disheartening is every day you see people speeding out there 18 wheelers being where they shouldn't be and you know I think the good Lord above, nothing has happened to my family to this point. But my parents are elderly and get to the point I, I, I'm afraid for them to go out the driveway. My dad's almost been hit to a couple times pulling out his own driveway. So, uh, I mean, I, I understand the city staff doing what they can do, and I don't fault them, but if we could reach out to DOT or something and see when they're going to get the roundabout completed and help that out up there. And uh, maybe we could just start seeing some work getting done out there because nothing so far, nothing's, I mean, it's just. They asked me about what we're going to do about Cox Road, and I don't, I can't really tell them anything. So I appreciate any help we could get. Absolutely noted. Good. Okay. Anything else from the council? Yes, Mr. Mayor, yeah. I have something. Um, council, I provided a a, a little uh, slip of paper. It's a it's a printout of a Tuscaloosa news report. The the title of it is a little misleading to, for my purposes. The title being. Uh, the Tuscaloosa mayor action needed to slow student apartment construction and um, the, the meat of this document is talks more about um, the manner in which they're attempting to slow um, development there and the mayor has introduced an impact fee for developers um, and uh, it's I, I bring this up here because I didn't get to come to the packet meeting on Friday, otherwise I would have brought it to you all there. I was, and I, the reason I bring it up is that I'd like to uh, gauge the appetite of this council as to whether or not we could charge our uh, city staff with reviewing some type of uh, impact fee going forward that we that is part of a, a development <coughs> agreement, um, monies which we could uh, decide on where to direct those monies, perhaps to historic preservation budgets or to increase public safety or something. I think it's an interesting idea and I think our city uh, is an attractive place to develop and um, with development comes added stresses to our infrastructure and uh, I think I would like to gauge whether or not anybody here on this council would be interested to have a discussion 
more complete discussion about this matter going forward. Well, real quick, you'll, you'll hit the legal part. I will tell you yeah. on student housing that the student housing task force is having a meeting Friday at lunch, and we'll have you know a report on the findings of the comprehensive inventory that's been done through our city, through the report that we've been given from Auburn University as far as what their plans are with enrollment in the future, and we'll be begin to discuss what those two uh, figures look like and how does that impact the future of Auburn. So. We're going to be talking about student housing very intensely starting well, Friday. To be clear, Mayor, I'm, I'm not necessarily speaking to the motivations of uh, the Mayor in Tuscaloosa. I'm speaking just about the general idea, the policy idea of having impact fees on, on developers as they continue to bring interesting projects into our city. Uh, it, it may be another way for us to uh, address other shortcomings that we may have in our budget. Sure. Has legal counsel ever provided a legal analysis on the legality of impact fees? Because I know there's case law in Alabama and other states that say that there, it is illegal to charge impact fees based on development. In order to charge impact fees in the state of Alabama, you must have permission of the legislature. Um, to my knowledge to date, and I've also read the article about Tuscaloosa, but to my knowledge to date, only one county has been granted that authority, and that was Baldwin County, and they have yet to implement in impact fees. They have to be charged across the board on all types of development once the legislature gives you permission. Um, in reading Tuscaloosa's case, and we're not here to speak specifically to that, I think that he's referring more to access fees that have to do with some water and sewer infrastructure that that language may have been turned in that article. We haven't had a chance to research because I do not believe, and our, our legislative team, of which Caitlin sits on, actually can look that up for me tomorrow, but I do not believe that Tuscaloosa has been granted the authority either um, to I, do so. When I read this before, I was impact fees. I, I don't yep. I think the, the author of this article. Excuse right, me. so <laughs> while it is possible to explore, there is that, that whole level of things, if staff were to explore it, um, and you were to direct us to do so, understand that the legislature would play a huge role in whether or not we would be allowed to <clears throat> go there. And it does require lengthy studies and other things to determine because you have to have a nexus. Um, that's my, my SAT word for the day of between the fees that we're charging and what the money's going to be used for and so on. And it's a very lengthy study process. Um, but yeah, we did study handily a few years ago. Why did Baldwin County not? implement them, they have permission to do so, and I think it's for all the reasons of, of concern. It's not that there was a disinterest, but you've got to charge them unilaterally. That's industrial, commercial, all housing, everything. It, it's across the board. It's all or nothing, typically, and that, that's what the challenge has been. So it's up to you guys. Would they do, I mean, would the legislature consider a municipality, or does it have to be a county? That is something we would need to research further. I don't, I don't have that information right now, but we can get back to you. So having said that, uh, I would still like to get a sense of whether or not it's something that we as a body would uh, be interested to have a conversation about. Bob, this is just raw feedback and immediate feedback. Mm -hmm. I'm not in favor of impact fees, but I don't have a problem asking the, the uh, staff to do some research on it and edify us a little bit more about what that means and what does it say. So I don't, I don't have a big issue with that. I hope that wouldn't be something that would be laborious. Um, that with your staff it just take a little time to, you know but um, but what I understand about them I'm, I'm not I'm not for them but I haven't done a lot of intense research either okay would something like um, I don't know some kind of commemoration or compensation for road closures and that kind of thing is that would that be something that would be considered because I, I know when you go down Janelda for example you know they've, they've got it closed down to one lane for the next several years. I mean, it, the, are, are, when we do these development agreements mm -hmm. and the contractor asks or developer asks, I'd like to close Janelda to one lane for the next two years. Is that something that, that we should be compensated for as for uh, the inconvenience caused to the city and to the, to the neighborhood and the traffic and situation? I mean, that's just an example. We've never, we've never asked anybody to, to no. pay us for those type of closures. Obviously, through the development agreement, there are 
there are transactions and agreements in there where the developer pays for certain things right. mainly to do with infrastructure but i've never known one kelly to be done yeah and i don't know if that would be closure. considered an impact fee or what I, but that's the kind of thing that i would like to expand as uh, to what right, uh, we, we do have to be careful and these are things that we would bet with the city attorney uh, you know i've learned very very handily that we have to be careful when we charge certain fees because they can be deemed taxes also by the state of alabama and it's this is a broad statement. These are things where we're happy to give you more information to understand, but there's been discussion for years about certain fees for certain things, and one of our challenges has always been if it's considered a tax by the state of Alabama, then we're out of bounds. So those are things that we can definitely look into if you so wish for us to do so. So if the council's okay, I'd, I'd like to ask the, the staff to do a cursory investigation research on this. and. Um, just report back your findings. That'll be fine. All right. Anything else? Other business? Um, gosh, it's so late. I feel almost um, this is out of place, but I do want to remind everybody the state of the city will be October the 28th. I forgot to remind you earlier, and um, this will be an opportunity at the Gooch Form and Arts Center. To, I'll be giving a report on where I see the city today and where we're going and what our challenges are and what our hopes are for the future. And it's certainly free and open to the public after work. And it won't take that long, and I'll be recognizing some people that have done some awesome things to make Auburn a better place. So if you want to go somewhere at 6.30 that night, you should be able to keep that date. Okay. So now it's time for Citizens Open Forum. If you'd like to come and address the council about anything on your mind, please give your name and address for the record, and we will give you three minutes. O.B. Jackson, once again, uh, I am here as a family friend and a purchaser. I've been here before on this particular matter from a uh, Minister Williams and his brother, which is ex-councilman woman Verlinda White. I was told that I needed to do, and he needed to do, a citizen's request for all documents as it pertains to their mother's estate, which is their mother and their father's estate. But since that time, the property and the communication about what should happen with the property had only been communicated to ex-councilwoman Verlinda White. I find that very appalling after going through about 75, 80, dollars worth of documents and coming before you guys asking that someone tell them who paid fifteen thousand dollars anonymously they don't want to pay even though it's their sister mr williams and his brother which is very sick right now and just he's just been moaning and groaning and trying to get out of here and, and they're going to come up and they're going to tell you how disappointed they are with the city and mayor you, you you ran on transparency i talked to you about this matter i've talked with mr davis about it we requested all of these documents we find no receipt i have been a citizen here my family has been here since a hundred years but like i say what's so hard about saying who paid it they they're not wealthy somebody paid it she didn't pay it if somebody in the city paid it, I hate to have to go to HUD and say, HUD, we've got people working in our community development department and in our city that refuse to tell us where $15,000 were paid. She's requesting that they give $10,000 of that money back. Now, I, I can't close and give money away where there is no closing statements or documents, which was requested. No communication to these two gentlemen. They both own a third. It was three people, a third. So what's so hard about saying, here's the receipt, who paid it, the credit card number's here. What's so hard about that? Mayor, transparency means that you tell people what they need. This is public records. You tell them what they need to know if it's some secret. And then, lo and behold, Keep the secret and let HUD ask it. Mr. Williams. Mayor, with all due respect to Mr. Jackson, I, uh, I'll sit here at midnight and listen to him, but this has absolutely nothing to do with us. Oh, we've said it. Yeah, I, no, it has nothing, nothing, nothing we can do. What, what, what? 
Steve, so, I wish you said that while I was there because let me answer this. If that money had not been federal government money and had not been paid to the city through HUD, which got the grant, and then it wouldn't have anything to do with it. If it was between you and I, and they wouldn't, you guys wouldn't have anything to do with it. Is that but clear? the city no, they, has the money and has the receipt. Is that they, they, they've monitored and they give you a copy of the credit card receipt. There's nothing else we can do. We have say, no, say we that have again, no please, sir. Yeah, they've given you a copy of the credit card receipt. No, 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 no. They gave me a blank sheet. I'm not going to sit there and not argue about it, but if you, if you want to discuss it, you need to discuss it with the city attorney because this council has nothing to do with that. Okay, and that's what we'll do. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hmm. Anyone else? I would like to come in on that. Yes, sir. My name is David William, and I would like to uh, speak on regard to what Mr. Jackson was saying. Well, my sister said she paid $15,000 for the receipt. We paid seventy dollars and said seventy seven or eighty dollars for all that document. And I didn't see not one piece of paper in there saying that she paid fifteen thousand dollars. The only thing I saw was where the city paid the contractor. So where's the where's the receipt where she paid it? Sir, we did receive we saw a copy of that receipt, the credit card receipt. Where is it? Where is it? In the document. It was, it was, it was provided to us. Yeah, we also. But well, it wasn't provided to us. I mean, it, it was, was provided by Mr. Jackson. Yeah. Mr. He Jackson gave us. it to us. I didn't see it. He gave it to us when we were the third or fourth time we talked about it. I mean, it was like the second time we talked about it. The receipt that she paid $15,000? Well, the problem was it was blocked. The signature. The signature was blacked out. And the credit card number. It, it, it wasn't signed by Belinda White. It was a. Okay. It, it was well. It was blacked out. You couldn't see who signed it. We're not. I mean, I think there's probably disclosure issues with showing who signed. Why wouldn't you show where she actually signed it? I think it's against the law to do that. The city signature was on it, on, on the uh, payment. You have to black out certain information. Financial records are required to be blacked out. I think that's probably why. I don't know. Um, that's typically why it is. I don't know either. But the, the thought is this, uh, what we're asking um, is her attorneys is requesting that we pay that uh, $15,000 back between me and my brother, okay? So we're just trying to get proof where she actually paid it and she have a, a receipt where she paid it. The city says she's paid it, right? We need a copy of that receipt. You would want a receipt if you paid something or paid a bill or something and you want to sign a receipt where you paid it. And we should feel like, we feel like that we should have a receipt from the city if it was donated or it was somebody courtesy paid it off or a credit card paid it off or a city card or whatever it was. We just need to know who paid it. If it was honestly paid by Belinda White, then we would pay it back out of the settlement. I would I would recommend you contact the attorney that's representing Miss White, and if they're making a demand for payment, ask for their show proof that payment was made, and that's their responsibility if they're making a demand. And, the, and just in my legal practice, well, well, we, we'll, well, we'll, that's that would be the process. I would if if someone tells me I owe them something, I say prove it, and then they have they would need to prove that it was paid. That would be my the route. I would go. I mean, if you're in litigation, are you? If you're in litigation, you can get that through discovery. You request it through discovery, if it's in litigation. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Move to adjourn. So moved. Very